What's up, y'all? Welcome to live streaming through Gen Con with Heavy Cardboard, where we teach, play, and discuss some of the hottest titles. Oops. Really? Ha, that's funny. I had two of them open. <laughs> <laughs> are we doing it twice? Yeah, Someone apparently we are. <laughs> We're in two places at once. Yeah, wow, that was weird. That was cool. Isn't live fun? <laughs> the Let's start over, shall we? Hey. Okay. Bye. All right, let's try that again. All right. Hey, what's up, y'all? Welcome to live streaming through Gen Con with Heavy Cardboard, where we teach, play, and discuss some of the hottest titles coming from Gen Con 2019. I'm your host, happy to be joined by my partner and a good friend of ours. I'm Jess. Andrew. All right, today we are bringing y'all Be Lives, We Will Only Know Summer, designed by Matt Shoemaker and published by Hit Him With A Shoe. That's Matt's company. So welcome everybody watching live around the world as well as after the fact. Now Matt and Hit Him With A Shoe also kindly provided us with this review copy of Be Lives. Lives Lives. Live, lives. Lives. With Be Lives uh, to be able to bring it to y'all today. Before we get started, a big thanks to all of our patrons who helped make all of this possible. Special shout out to Brian Childress. Say thanks for being a patron and supporting the show. Really appreciate it. Quick reminder, if you guys are liking what we do, uh, don't forget to like and subscribe down below. Uh, it helps the show, but it also helps you guys get notified whenever you hit that little bell whenever we go live, especially things like this, right? Also, you can go one step further and become a member of the herd and support us financially and help keep the show growing and advancing the technology and everything else that we do here at Heavy Cardboard. You can go to pledgehc.com and support the show there. So be lives. We originally heard about this a year and a half ago, mm. something like that, at I think, was it Dice Tower Con last yes, year? Yes, it was. I think it was. Um, and we met Matt and company. And his parents. Right, yeah, his parents <laughs> were there. That was, that, that, that was, uh, that was awesome. It was. Um, and the game looks great. Uh, I think it turned out really, really well. Uh, obviously, we saw a prototype of it then, and we have the published version of it now. It's a... Uh, there's a lot more going on here than probably at first glance. Mm -hmm. So the, the teach is going to be a bit involved because I'm going to take my time going through it with you guys and explaining everything, but some of the rating and some of the nuance, we're going to wait until it actually comes through. All right. So you guys ready to uh, check out our hives and, and go into Be Lives? Hives, Be Lives. Anyway, there's, there's a lot of puns going it's on. Gonna I'm happen, distracted. Yeah. It's going to happen. It's day three of heavy, uh, yeah. gen, stream, live streaming mm -hmm. through Gen Con. Mm -hmm. But we're having fun, and hopefully you guys are here to have fun with us as well. So without further ado, if y'all are ready, yes. and y'all are ready, ready, let's get into B Lives. Join the story of the untold lives of bees. In the game of Bee Lives, you represent a queen bee managing your hive and trying to ensure its survival. You'll have to collect honey and pollen 
hatch new brood, and build more honeycomb. But what's going on outside your hive is just as important as what's going on inside your hive. Your hive will swarm when it gets too big, and these newly formed wild hives will compete with you and the other players over resources that are available. Can you ensure that your hive will make it through the winter? And ultimately, that is our goal. So what is it you guys are looking at here? You know, there's a bunch of board, little boards around here. So starting off with, we have the seasons board over there. So winter, spring, summer, and fall. <laughs> Okay, it wasn't terrible. So spring, summer, and fall are represented, and there are season cards, which are essentially kind of a rule that is in play for that season, okay, or for that month of the season. Then over here, there is a score track board, which that score track board goes up to 40, and then there are some discs that uh, if you flip, you pass 40, you pass 80, so on and so forth. Then keep going over to the right, you have the wild hive board. There are eight possible wild hive strength markers, which are just basically aesthetically different from one another to mark what the different hives are. Then out here on the board, if you will, where that we're going to be building, we have our starting bloom tiles. So the bloom represents uh, or shows on this little symbol on the tile itself, and everybody has a hive of their own color on there. Then kind of off board, if you will, there's a bag of map tiles. So all of these map tiles, there are 80 in total, are going to be in this bag there. Then there are the three resources. There's honey, pollen, and water. And then there are a host of other tokens that are mostly off camera, but there's the queen bee tokens. There are four different types of queen bee that can run your hive of your choice. Then there are starvation tokens, which there's a host of these. These are minus two and minus four victory points at the end of the game, so ugh. Then there are swarm tokens that look a lot like those. These swarm tokens will represent, hey, your hive is going to swarm as the game goes along. Then there are skip feeding tokens, which these are always nice because now you don't have to feed your hive for a given round. Then there are wild hive tokens, so the actual hives of the various uh, neutral hives, not like ours, but these will end up out on the board like so, like that. And then there are neutral worker tokens that match up with the various hives as the game goes along. And then there are 5x resource tokens, so hey, if we run out of honey or we run out of pollen or whatnot, we can use those to represent that. Then on our, then on our uh, tableaus, we have a hive board, and we're going to count these two boards as kind of one board even though they're physically not. So this is the inner workings of your hive, and this is divided into six areas, including this one over here. So this center part right here is your worker area. This is where worker bees reside. Everybody starts with three worker bees, as you can see there, and there the darker spots on there represent your starting bees. Then over on the left-hand side are action spaces. Now these are the worker placement spaces that you're going to take your bees and actually physically move them onto the spaces. So worker placement in a sense that you can go to these places out here, but nobody else can. Why? Because they have them on their own board, obviously. These are also laid out roughly in the order in which you're most likely to take the action. So you're going to forage and scout far more often than you're going to have to cool your hive and requeen, as it were, okay? But that's not an exact thing, but it gives you a rough idea on the, the uh, amount of times that you're going to, or the not necessarily the importance, but the amount of times that you're going to take a given action. So. Then moving over to the right hand side over here is the comb section. This is where you're going to store your resources as you can see here and room for baby bees or brood. And I keep wanting to call them the brood, but it's just brood and I feel like that's just not natural. But anyway, it, the brood spaces as well. You are limited by the comb size marker. So this kind of under construction kind of looking Everything to the left of that is available. So everybody starts with a, uh, a comb size of 10, and as this advances, 
that will be what's available for open spaces for mm -hmm. resources as well as for your brood. Okay, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Now, this also tells you the number of bees that you can have before your hive swarms. There are two values, and I know they're tiny on the screen, but take my word for it. So, for instance, when we start out with a hive of 10, you can have up to five worker bees before your hive swarms, unless you have an aggressive queen, then you can have a maximum of three before your hive swarms. That's what the yellow and green or purple. Uh, numbers there represent. Then we have the queen space up here. I mean, that is the queen bee. She deserves her own space. So the selected queen token resides there. And again, there are four options of the various queens that you can have. And that may change throughout the game through various actions, be it swarming or requeening, etc., etc. Now, there are also two other little symbols up here that are uber important. This play or green arrow that looks like a play symbol, like on your, I almost said VCR. Who the hell has a VCR? <laughs> really? Oh, I do. Okay, other than <laughs> yes, who has one? But the play symbol means, hey, your queen is available to have babies. She can have a brood, meaning she can, she can procreate. She can provide more workers that turn or the next turn. Whereas if the brood symbol, which is the larvae right there on there, if that is ever turned over like this to the pause symbol, that means in the following uh, month, because we're going through months, your queen will not have a brood. We, there will be no babies from your hive, yep. depending if it's in the pause or whether it's in the play, you will. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Then there is the nurse. So that is a nurse bee up right there. And that is basically where new workers will go. Not your babies, but your new workers will go. And then there is the disease track over here. Now that, that guy right there, he is a vir Varroa mite. And the position of the Varroa mite here on the disease track indicates how much disease is present in your hive. So we're trying to give a little bit of theme here as well. So your disease level increases whenever you steal honey from other hives or when you go out and forage out here into the wild, these mites are going to come back with them and it's going to be negative for your hive. Each month, you're going to lose newly hatched brood according to the disease level as shown on these numbers. Now, the disease also kills your adult worker bees during the winter months. So in other words, keeping your mites to a minimum are good so that they don't kill both your workers as well as your babies as well, okay? After mm -hmm. they hatch, but yeah. before they come become workers. Does that make sense? Yep. Yes. Everybody also has a supply of worker bees. There is the big old first player marker, which is a, a big old bee. And everybody has a couple of player aids here that are going to come in handy as the game goes along. So that's everything that you guys are looking at here component-wise. Now, how do you play the game? Well, Bee Lives takes place over the course of one year. Now, you can play the long game, which is two years, or the epic game, which is three years. We're playing the regular game, which is one year tonight. Now, each round being a month within that year. Now, the productive months are those that you can see that Andrew just pointed at on the seasons board. So March through November, those are the productive months or the regular turns or rounds in this game. And then there are, this is important, and this is pretty rare. I don't know of any other game that does this. There are three successive winter upkeep months. Upkeep, upkeep, upkeep works just like that with nothing in between them for December to February to follow right before you go into the end of the game and final scoring. Now the goal of the game is to gain the most victory points by the end of the game, but also, and I cannot overstate this enough, you must have, you must have at least one single worker be survived through the year, including through winter, to be eligible to win the game. You can have far more points than anybody else. If you have no bees, your hive does not survive, you cannot win. Have I driven that point home strong enough? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, 
Victory points are gained a number of ways. Having your hive swarm, basically it splits and breaks off to form other hives, okay? Also, you can score points by successfully raiding other hives and stealing their honey, because we're bees, mm -hmm. okay? Also, you can score points by successfully defending your hive from other attackers. Now, when you attack, you can attack one of two options, other players, but also the neutral hives that may come in and vice versa. Other players may attack you that you can defend against and the neutrals may come and attack and raid you and you can defend. And if you successfully defend, you will score victory points there as, as well. And finally, hey, if you survive winter, be, you know, you get points because, you know, remember, winter is coming. So during the productive months, which is the, you know, the, the main part of the game, each round, except for the first round, will follow the same series of steps or phases as shown in this sequence. There's the egg phase, the feeding phase, the brood phase, which is not listed here, and then the swarm phase, and then the event phase. Now the event phase is kind of colored a little bit different, and the reason for that is the game actually begins in the first round in the event phase, and you skip everything before it. But other than the first round, this is the normal uh, order of operations, okay? Then the action phase, which as you might could guess, is actually the meat of the game, and then we get into a cleanup phase after that. So, best way that I know how to teach this is actually go through the various phases. Now I realize that you're not going to have a ton of context for the first four phases before we get to the action phase, but I still think it's going to be the best way to teach the game. So the first phase is the egg phase, all right? And this can be done simultaneous. We'll probably do it in turn order the first round or two, but as it is. Count how many empty cells are in your hive not filled with resources. So again, let me bring your attention to my hive. I have a total of 10 spaces on my hive that are available for resources or potential babies or brood, right? So I have seven of them filled from a previous round, as an example. I have three empty spaces. So therefore, that means I can have up to, or I will have a brood of three. Very simple. If you have no spaces available, well, you can't have babies. If you can't have babies, you're going to go ahead and get a swarm token, meaning when you get to the swarm phase, it's time to bug out. See what I did there? <laughs> it's time to bug out and swarm and actually break off into a new hive, okay? Only if you have no spaces. You will get this token as a reminder that, hey, you're going to go ahead and swarm. So no babies, time to swarm. Okay. So that's the egg phase, like so. Moving on to the feeding phase, well... Bees eat honey, so here we go. So the bees are going to eat some amount of honey. It's going to, these, I'm getting ahead of myself. One honey feeds two workers, rounded down, okay? So in other words, I have, actually, let me double check. I don't think it's rounded down, I apologize. It's rounded up. It's rounded, yeah, it's rounded up. So in other words, I have three bees, I would have to spend two honey because one honey feeds two bees. Mm -hmm. So one, one, one bee is getting really happy. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a fat bee, all right? Brood are not hatched yet, therefore you don't have to feed them. If you don't have enough honey and you must feed, you cannot neglect your bees, you must feed if you have the honey. But as it were, if I only had one honey here, I would be able to feed two bees. The remaining bee starves and dies and goes back to the supply. However, if it's any of your last three bees, in lieu of losing that starving and dying bee, you can voluntarily take a starvation token. What's a starvation token? Um, minus two points at the end of the game. You can always do this if ever you're going to lose one of your last three bees, whether it's through starvation, through raiding, various other things. If the last three, any of them are going to die, you can always take a starvation token instead. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yep. Yeah. All right. So that is the feeding, the, so, <clears throat> excuse me, that's the egg phase and the feeding phase. Both of those can be done simultaneously. Moving on to the brood phase, which is not listed here. This also 
can be done simultaneously. So the brood then hatches from the nest and new workers arrive. So these are your potential new workers. And I'm gonna move this mite down to there. However, the number of hatchling or number of bees that actually hatch or brood that hatches are equal to the number of pollen that you spend. And you again, just like honey, you must feed pollen you must give to be able to have a brood. So I have two pollen, I must spend two to hatch two. I cannot choose to keep some back. So in other words, I spend these two pollen, I get two hatchlings right there. I don't think they're called hatchlings, but indulge me. What happens to the last one? Didn't hatch, died, okay? Anything, uh, uh, yeah, um, there you go, easy enough. After they hatch, however, they don't go straight out here yet. They have one more uh, hurdle to jump, and that is you have to check for disease on the disease track. I've paid my pollen, and they've hatched, but they haven't become workers yet. Because wherever your mite is, your Varroa mite, take a look at what number he's at. It's at minus one. What does that minus one mean? Exactly what you think it means. One of them didn't quite make it died. So I paid the pollen to hatch it, but it still died. Now, all the survivors, or <clears throat> survivor, becomes a worker. Congratulations, you got a new worker. Okay? So yes, you may spend pollen to hatch your brood and still lose some of the disease immediately afterwards. Nature don't play, yo. Mm -hmm. So in other words, maybe if you keep that down, you won't have that problem. So, moral of the story, watch your mites. Any questions on the brood phase? No. Nope. Okay, moving on to the swarm phase. Check to see if a player's hive swarms. There are two different ways in which a player's hive may swarm. The, if the hive, si hive size exceeds its threshold, meaning, remember this number that I told you? If we don't have the purple queen here, which uh, as you see we do not, we're gonna use the yellow number because it's a yellow queen. Good iconography there. So it's, this number says five. How many do I have? I have four. If I had five, that's still okay. That number has not been exceeded. No swarm, good to go. However, remember earlier, what if all these spaces were full with resources and during the first phase, the egg phase, we couldn't have a brood? We got that swarm token. So what happens there? Well, now we're gonna swarm regardless of this. If either this is exceeded or you have that, there's going to be a swarm. This happens in turn order, starting with the first player going clockwise. So if I don't swarm, if I didn't have that token, then we move over to Jess. She wouldn't swarm, she's good to go. We go to Andrew, he doesn't swarm. Okay, phase over, it didn't happen. However, let's go ahead and go through as if. So maybe I didn't have room for babies. Maybe I got a swarm token. Or maybe I had too many resources. There we go. We're going to have a swarm. Ain't no party like a swarm party. Here we go. All right. Step one. Remove half your worker bees rounded down to your supply. And I'm going to actually set these aside here because that's going to come into play here in a little bit. Then remove half of your honey, also rounded down to the general supply. I, too, am going to set these aside kind of like so as a reminder. Then you have to choose a wild and crazy hive not already in play and place it on a, on a tile within three spaces of your hive, okay? Now, these are different ones, and again, the iconography is just to differentiate between them. So if this were Jess, she would probably pick the dandelion one. Why? Because she has dandelions tattoo, so there's that. I like dandelions. She, you, she likes dandelions. There you go. So within three of your hive, it cannot be on the same location as your hive, so within three, one, two, three, okay, cool, let's say we put it right there, okay? Easy enough. Then, if there were no tiles directly adjacent, if I haven't done this already, then you do not place the hive. Okay, you skip that step. If there's no legal placement, maybe there's already hives, whatever but let's say those don't exist and I can't place it, you still lose this stuff, you just don't place the extra hive. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. But it is a legal placement, so we'll go ahead and throw it up there. Then we're going to set the strength equal to the number of bees I lost. 
How many bees did I lose? Two. So we're going to move the dandelion marker to a strength of two for the wild hive. Okay. All right. I keep wanting to do the wild and crazy, but I think once is our limit on that, so there we go. <laughs> now you decide if you want to change your hive location to the new one or remain where you are. So, oh yeah, you know it's coming. Should I stay or should I go? Okay. <laughs> so you have a decision whether or not you want to move your hive where that is. Basically, flip-flop spots or not. If you choose to stay, your queen must change. There is going to be a change in higher or in uh, leadership within your hive. However, <laughs> you'll notice you can change, but you can change to the exact same kind. But whenever you change queens, it's going to go to the pause, meaning the next season, or I'm sorry, the next month, there's not going to be an egg phase for you because no babies, because you know, Stress. Having is stressful. Right, mm -hmm. okay. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yep. So if you stay, you still change queen. Now you could choose one of the others, and I'll go over what those are at the very end here, but you can remain the same and just move it over to the pause. Okay? All right. However, if you go, you must keep the same queen. But, as Jeff just alluded to, moving stressful, not having babies. Moving stressful, no. So no matter what, if you swarm, you're not having babies the next month is what the moral of the story is, okay? But the nice thing is you do take a, hey, we don't have to feed because you know what? Maybe we're just going to eat out. We're going to get some fast food. We're not going to have to worry about cooking at home so you don't have to feed, okay? So the next month during the feeding phase, you don't have to worry about it because you swarmed and you moved. Okay? And you'll keep this little token to remind you of this. Okay? And because you moved, you downsized and you got rid of all your extra stuff, right? You don't want to move all that junk that you've acquired just like in real life, right? So what does that mean? All your resources go away. Not only that, regardless of what your comb size was, it resets to 10. So basically, you moved hives, so you're starting over, okay? However, you're going to bump your comb size for every two honey that you discarded in your purging for the move. How many did I discard? Two. So it bumps up one for every two that I discarded. And that's why we set it aside like this to be able to remind us, wait, I can't remember how many did I discard, okay? Easy enough? Mm -hmm. And that's rounded up. So even if you only discarded one, you're still gonna bump it up one, okay? So maybe there was a little bit more space in a new hive. All right. Then you have to physically swap positions on the map tile with the hive in your new wild hive. Meaning, if you moved, well, you gots to go. So you move, just like so. And then, finally, why did we go through all that effort? Well, the goal of the game is victory points, right? So you're going to score victory points. Depending on the season, if it's spring, five points. If it's summer, three points. If it's fall, one point. So the earlier and often you do it early, the more points it's worth. But there are consequences to whatever you may do as the game goes along. So that is the swarm phase. Uh, actually, that's a really good question. I will double check that real quick. I do not believe your mites reset. Because, you know what, the mites are on you, and you're bringing them with you. So I do not believe that your mites reset at all, and I will double check that real quick. Nope. You don't. Okay. And we'll double check it just to make sure later on. All right. So that is the swarm phase. Any questions on that? And we're, when that happens, we're going to go through it step by step mm -hmm. and make sure that that's clear for everybody, okay? Then the event phase. And this is finally where we're actually going to start the game. We're going to flip over whatever, and go ahead, because we're going to do it in the first turn anyways. We're going to flip over the first one, and hey, this is the March card, and we're going, basically it's a special rule that is in play for that month universal. We will go over what all these are when they come out. Okay, moving on, that's the event phase. Finally, we get to the action phase, the meat of the game. Take actions, 
okay? We're going to take one single action in clockwise order, starting with the start player, and this may be a single B for various actions. It may be multiple Bs for a single action, and you can take these actions multiple times but you can only take it one at a time, regardless of how many Bs it uses, up until you use all your workers, just like a normal worker placement game. I take one action doing whatever it is that I'm going to be doing, then Jess will take a single action, then Andrew would take a single action, and then any neutral hives or wild hives that are out here that have a strength rating, because obviously these are all at zero, they're not in play yet, then this hive will take an action. Now these neutral actions or these wild hives actually have a pre-programmed series of actions that they are going to take and I am not going to go through those until we actually go through them in the game because I'm going to reference the rule book and step through every one so that everyone is familiar with that when they go. In every single hive, so if there were a total of say three hives out here, we would do that for each of the neutral hives. And then I would take another action, another action, another action, then they would take one, another action, so on and so forth, until all of the regular players have taken their final action. When the actual players, and not the NPCs, have taken all of their actions, these guys do not take a final action after we are done in our last round. Does that make sense? Yes. Yep. All right? Okay. Oh! Thank you for pointing that out. That out. If you stay, let me back up because there was one correction here. In the swarm phase, if you stay, you reduce this by half. You might. There we go. Thank you. Good catch. Christopher. Oh, of course it was Christopher. Well done, <laughs> Christopher. All right, cool. So taking one action, going clockwise, et cetera, et cetera, okay? We're going to rinse and repeat, like I said, until we're all done, and they do not take a final action. Then we go into the cleanup phase, and obviously I'm going to go through the action phase in detail here. In a little bit, I will double back after the cleanup phase. The cleanup phase, pass the first player clockwise one, remove all the neutral workers, so if there are any neutral workers out here on the various spaces out here on the board. We're going to remove them. Retrieve all your bees from out here, whatever, or from your board. Put them back into your hive. And then, if your Varroa mite was ever stood up, and I'll get to the details of how that happens later on, he then lays down. Okay? And then, do it again. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right. So, that's how you play the game. There are a couple other things that we need to go over, mainly the action phase, so we're still getting started on this. But I want to point out, at the end of spring, all three of our tableaus that we've been building of tiles will then join to form one big meadow at the end of spring, and then it's game on, kind of, okay? Mm -hmm. So there's not going to be any raiding until summer begins. Mm -hmm except raiding against the neutrals for the most part, okay? Okay. All right, so that is, and I'll go through this when we actually are going to do that, uh, the details at the end of spring. So now we're gonna go over each of the individual actions, and here we go. So we'll start and work our way down mostly. So we'll start out with the easiest one, which is scouting. Scouting says pick one tile, and we're going to reset this, let me put that, there. There we go. You're going to scout to one location within three tiles of where your hive is. So I say one, two, three tiles. I'm going to say I'm going to scout for this location right here. So then we're going to reach into the handy dandy bag of mystery. We're going to pull out two tiles and we're going to choose one of those two tiles, and whichever tile we choose, we're gonna go ahead, and orientation doesn't matter, we're gonna put it right there, the other tile goes back into the bag, boom, we have scouted. But to take that action, that requires one B. Boom, done, that's scouting. Any questions on that? No. The details as to why you might want to scout are about to come out right now, mm -hmm. and that is in the other action, which is foraging. Foraging is how you're going to get resources, mostly. Foraging is going to cost you one, two, or three bees. How many bees will it take? Well, that all depends on how far away from your hive you're going to go. You can forage where your hive is, that will cost you one bee. You can go to the a tile adjacent to your hive, that will cost you one bee. But two bees to go two tiles, three tiles is three 
bees. Easy enough. So I would then place one here, or more likely, I would just say, you know what? I'm actually going to come out here, and I'm just going to forage on my home tile right there. So now we're going to look at our handy-dandy little player aid. But because it's so small for you guys, I'm actually going to show you this on screen. So you can see, depending on what season it is, it shows how much honey and what type of tile, how much honey, maximum, how much pollen, maximum, and how much water, maximum, that you can actually acquire from those various tiles, okay? So there are four different tiles in this game. There are blooms, which have a little bloom symbol. There is a wilt that looks like a sad little flower that is wilting. There is a harvest, which looks like a blooming flower there. And there is a wet tile. And those will change as to what they produce or what you can harvest or forage depending on the season. Now I say there's a maximum. Why might you want to take less than that? Because remember, if you don't want to have to swarm then you better leave some room to have some babies. So if I go on this bloom, I could take five honey and I could take five pollen, which is awesome. But it doesn't leave a whole lot of room to have my brood. So be careful on how many you choose. Mistakes will be made, I'm sure, but just keep that in mind, it's a maximum. So that's foraging. Again, one, one, two, or three, depending on how far from your, your hive you are. Any questions on foraging? Nope. Okay, all right. We're gonna skip raiding because this is the most complex of the actions. We'll hit that last. So now we're gonna go down to defending. <laughs> defending is blocking off raiders. And you'll notice that it shows a little infinity symbol, meaning you can put as many bees in a single action as you want there. Done. They don't do anything if nobody raids you. Think of them as an insurance policy. You didn't waste them, you just protected them just in case. You're not wasting money on insurance, you're just protecting yourself. So that's kind of what they do. Easy enough? Mm -hmm. All right, moving on. Now we'll talk about building wax. Well, your honeycomb is made of wax. How do you expand your honeycomb? It's by building wax. So you assign worker bees to the build, build, to the build wax action space you can assign as many of your worker bees as you want. However, for every worker bee that you assign to that space, you must spend two honey. And again, you can do these in any action and you can do them multiple times even if you've already done it once. So maybe you go out and forage and then you build wax. So if I want to go ahead and spend two workers to go ahead and do so, that would cost me a total of four honey to do so but for every two honey I spend, or check that, for every worker I place here, I have to spend two honey. How many workers do I have? Two, so I get to advance my hive two spaces, or expand my hive two spaces. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, that's building wax. Moving on down to cleaning bees. I realize that sounds strange, however, that's how we get rid of mites, okay? That is the main way we're going to get rid of the mites. You're going to assign worker bees to the clean bee location here. You can assign as many of your available worker bees as you want, and for each one that you assign there, you move the Varroa mite one space backward. So, whoop. if I assign two, I would do it again. Whoop. And now, hey, now, remember when I lost all those babies, or the baby be No, I won't, because I'm back at zero. All right? In addition to that, and this is where we're talking about standing up your Varroa mite, the next time this month that you would gain disease, either by foraging, which I forgot I overlooked explaining that, I apologize, or by stealing honey from one of the other hives by raiding, you're going to bring back some mites. Normally, you would gain some, but if he's standing up, you lay them down and you don't gain any mites the first time. So let me double back real quick and talk about that on the foraging. For each resource, uh, check that, you gain one disease when you forage, regardless. Mm -hmm. Okay, you move the Varroa mite when you forage one space. I forgot to mention that. However, if you would clean bees first, you would have stood him up and instead of now, you won't gain that disease. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. So I apologize. Freshly cleaned. 
yes. area. There so you go, right. It, it, it. it is mite free. And okay. Christopher did say when you do leave, your disease level goes to zero. So okay. Oh, those it's are a new hive. There yes. you go. Yeah. New hive. So those are the yeah. ways to so get rid of that smell. disease. New house smell. <laughs> yes. New hive smell. <laughs> exactly. There we go. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. I dig it. All right. So any question on the clean bees? Nope. Nope. All right. Moving on to the cool hive. Now, I'm going to briefly cover this because this will not happen terribly often. This will only need to happen when one of these cards comes out says overheating. Okay, when that happens, you can assign worker bees to the cool hive action space for, one, for every five workers that you have total, even if you've used them on various things out here, for every five that you have, you must assign one worker bee to the cool hive and spend one water cube to be able to cool the hive. Keep everything chill. <laughs> Sorry, I'm terrible tonight. <laughs> I know, I know. So again, the only time you need to do that is when this says overheating. One strategy hint I will say, there's no way to get rid of resources voluntarily. So if overheating isn't coming out and you have water clogging up spaces out here, that's just clogging up spaces. You can't get rid of it unless you use the cool hive, which you can't do unless it's overheating. So keep that in mind, okay? So that's the cool hive action. Easy enough? Mm-hmm. All right. Whew. A moment. Some, water, uh, some tea. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm just glad I'm not winging this. This, this is way too involved of a teach winging. to wing it. Mm -hmm. I know. Mm -hmm. Well done. The wasp up guys got me to laugh. That was good. All right. <laughs> Final action before we double back to the rating is requeening. It's exactly what you might think it is. Take one worker, make a new queen. Hey, it's time for a regime change here, okay? It's a coup. I like I, that. <laughs> Discard your current queen. Get a new queen, okay? And because it's a new queen, hey, she's got to get kind of comfortable in her new surroundings before she can have babies. So therefore, no brood. It, the the uh, larvae will come to the paws. For the next for the next month's egg phase, mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. and I'll go over these here in a little bit. What those are. All right, so now let's get back to rating. This is by far the most involved process. Now I don't mean to scare anybody off, but Matt, the designer, did go ahead and post this flow chart as you see here. And wait, it's double sided. <laughs> <laughs> depending on whether or not you are rating against a player or or whether wild a player is rating or whether a neutral or a wild hive is rating. Now this looks terribly intimidating. It's actually not that bad, no. but there's a lot of steps. So here's my question. Do you guys want me to go over this in detail or should we wait until we actually do it? We'll go over it in detail now. Good call. Okay. So we're going to go to the rating space. Okay, you can assign as many of your worker bees as you want. The more bees that you assign to a raiding party, the more likely that the raid is successful. Obviously, overwhelm them with force mm -hmm. of bees. And let's throw out an extra bee out there. So let's say I'm going to send three bees. You're going to choose a hive. Now this can be a wild hive or another player's hive. And we're going to start with, well, yeah, we'll get to that. That's going to be the target of our raid. The target hive must be located within three spaces of your own hive. Well, because we start out disjointed like this, there's no raiding of other players' hives during spring. The end of spring, when we come together, depending on how we merge, we may or may not be within three spaces. But as it is, this is my only target, so I choose this target here. Okay? And you cannot target a hive that you've already raided this month, so no picking on somebody in that regard. And if a hive has no honey, you can't target them, okay? But all of these hives are implied to have some amount of honey on there. Then you bi build your pool of raiding dice, okay? So you'll notice that the raid dice over there in our uh, dice tray. Now the number of raid dice is de de determined by the number of bees that are included in the raid. So, and you know what? Instead of me explaining this, I'm just going to point and look. 
this chart shows how many raid, how many bees, you get that many dice. Easy enough, right? Those are 12 sided dice, all of them, except for the six sided. The six sided are for ra uh, a wild hive on wi wild hive violence, which can happen in this game, and you likely will see that as we go along. So, as it is, I would get one raid die. So let me have one die, just give me a die. Mm -hmm. I roll it, and let's say I rolled a four. And you'll notice they're 12-sided, but they only go up to fours on them. You're gonna have to take my word for it. So I roll a four in this case. The number that I rolled compared to my raid party, which is smaller, whichever is smaller, that's the number, if you will. So three is smaller than four, so therefore my rating strength is three. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. All right, so let's go back and set this up how it actually was. There we go. Okay. You with me so far? Apply that to determine how many dice, roll the die, and what's the smaller number? That's your base strength, okay? If you don't like, maybe I rolled a one. If you don't like what you rolled, mm -hmm. you can re-roll. Ah. Now you mm -hmm. can re-roll. <laughs> Let's say I roll a one. You can re-roll, but at this point it doesn't make a whole lot of sense because your smallest number is going to be one, so you're not going to. Okay, but does that make sense? You can always sacrifice a B to re-roll. How many re-rolls are you allowed? You're allowed a maximum of three. Okay? So each time you re-roll, though, you sacrifice a B. When you sacrifice, that means at the end of the round they ain't coming home. They died. They died a hero to be able to allow you to re-roll. Okay? All right. That also reduces the number of honey that you can steal. But again, let's say I rolled a four. There we go. So my strength is actually three, okay? So whether you're raiding a player hive or whether you're raiding a wild hive it diff it is different. We're gonna talk about the wild hive because that's all we can do in the first three rounds. At the end of spring, when we merge all these, then I'll stop and talk about raiding a player hive. That makes sense? Sure. Mm -hmm. All right. So raiding a wild hive, reduce the strength of the wild hive based on the number equal to the strength of your raiding party. And you may reduce the wild hive strength even further if you wish by sacrificing worker bees from your raid party. For each bee that you sacrifice, reduce the wild hive strength by one to a minimum of zero. Okay, that's a lot of words. So, let's say this were actually at five. I rolled a four. My strength is three, though, because three is smaller than that, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to reduce this number by three. One, two, three. Four, five. I killed the hive. The hive comes off the board at that point. Okay? If I didn't kill the hive, the hive stays there. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay? All right. Now, if you reduce the wild hive strength to zero, it's a successful raid, and what happens? Hey, I score two points for doing so, okay? However, the reason you were doing that, not just to score the points, but to take honey cubes equal to the wild hive strength that you reduced it. So how many had I reduced? If I didn't, let me get back to this example, a standard. Let's say it were at two. My strength is three. Okay, three, I reduce it, two. I get two honey. Mm -hmm. Easy enough. You just hit three. Uh, you steal honey from the wild hive equal to the number by which you reduce the wild hive strength. Right. So no, I only reduced it two because it was only at two. Well, you had a five Oh, yeah, yeah, example. okay, yeah, yeah. If it were at five and I reduced it to two, I would get three honey. Yeah. But as it is, because it's sure. actually only at two, I would reduce it to two. I would get two honey. Reduce the two, yeah. And then I would score two points for reducing it and getting it off the board. Does that make sense? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. But even if I did so, I would then get five honey and two points. Right. Does that make sense? Yep. Yep. Okay. That's a lot of words. I understand that, but it's actually not that hard. All that clear? Yeah. Is mud? Mm -hmm. All right. So that's raiding against uh, wild hives. That's all we're going to go over right now. Uh, because the player on player is a little bit different and a little bit more involved. We'll do that at the end of spring. Mm -hmm. All right. 
So that said, I think the only two things that I need to go over now is the difference uh, in the queens and the actual winter upkeep and final scoring. So the, let's go over the four different types of queens now. Starting out with the queen that I have here, which is the one with the sword. She is an aggressive queen. Your hive performs better in combat. During any raid, whether you are the attacker or the defender, increase your strength one for every two of the worker bees involved. Just, she's stronger. The raiding party is stronger. Okay, mm -hmm. any questions on that? Okay, nope. good. Next, we will go to the hygienic queen. And she is that your disease level increases more slowly. During setup, when you get the new queen, where you're going to actually flip over this board. And now you'll notice that there's kind of a in-between space for each of the mite spaces. Okay? You never move your Varroa mite more than one space when you raid another hive. Because remember, when you raid, you're bringing back a mite, so you would increase by one. So it starts up here. It goes to zero. Then it goes to a, a kind of a In empty space. Yeah. Zero. Empty space. Yeah. And at the end of the round, it's always going to revert back to the last real space okay. that it went to. So this is better with the hygienic queen. That's that's pretty nice. So it, it acquires faster. If you change queens. Flips back over. You betcha. Because that's the only one that uses that mm -hmm. side. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. So the next one is, <laughs> I like how they term it, the prolific queen. Your hive gains new worker bees faster. When hatching a brood for every two brood that you hatch into worker bees, you gain an extra worker bee taken directly from your supply. So you don't have to worry about disease, you don't have to worry about, hey, you just get an extra. Oh. For every two. Okay. Okay. And lastly, be careful with this one in your early plays. This is the nomadic bee. Your hive will swarm more frequently. To determine your swarm threshold, you use the purple number, which is way lower than the yellow number. Okay? There you go. Those are the four queens. After the end of November, then we're going to go into the end of game stuff, which is winter upkeep. Now, this is unique to this game. I don't know of another game that does this. After the productive months, there are three months of winter upkeep immediately following one another. So during each month of winter, there are two steps. Feed your bees and then lose bees to disease. So let's go ahead and put that there. Let's say I have that and indulge me. And let's say I actually had three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I had 10 bees. We're just gonna throw them out here for there, four, nine, ten. That's me at the end of the productive months. I have these ten bees. First series, and all three work the exact same way. You have to feed your bees. You spend honey from your comb equal to one-third the number of the worker bees in your hive rounded down. I have ten. What's a third of ten? Three and a third. So I spend three honey rounded down. Then I lose bees to disease. How many do I lose? I lose two. Then we do it again. Feed your bees. I now have a total of eight bees. Rounded down, it's one third of eight. That would be two honey. Then I lose two bees. Now I have a total of six bees. I need two honey. Well, I can't feed them. Indulge me. Let's cheat. <laughs> Let's say I have one honey left. I need two. I lose them because I couldn't feed them, right? No, that goes up. All right. And then I lose two more Oof. to disease. Mm -hmm. I still have a bee left at the end of the third winter upkeep. I survive. <laughs> Congratulations. Now we go into final scoring. You get one victory point for every remaining honey. <laughs> and then one point for every worker bee that you have left, you lose two points for each of your starvation totals or tokens that you have, plus any points that you've accumulated throughout the game, whoever has the most points wins. However, if you have no bees, I don't care how many points you, you are uh, found to be the weakest link, goodbye, you cannot win. And that, folks, finally, is how you play Bee Lives, exactly one hour. <laughs> Woo! 
It shouldn't be that hard. It's not that involved, but it seems like it. So there you go. It's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of stuff in this game. Okay. Everyone feel good about that? Ish? All right, good. All right, we will reset this. <laughs> Any questions in the peanut gallery that you guys saw? Nope. All right. Andrew's going to go first. No, we'll randomize it. I'll go first. Or we'll actually randomize Whichever. it. So, actually, before we get started, and I will bring the cameras up and everything else, we need to determine who most recently consumed honey in mead counts, it says. I'm going to go out on a limb and say it was me or Andrew. Not me. You vegan girl. <laughs> um, uh, I had peanut butter with honey in it last weekend. That would be you. So <laughs> Andrew's going to go first. There we go. So everybody starts with three Bs and choose which of the queens you would like. And uh, yeah, there. I, yeah, here, I'm going to make it pretty, pretty obvious. I'm, I'm going to go with a hygienic B. There we go, and I need a third B, or a hygienic queen. Um, <laughs> so if you're going to do a lot of rating, right? No, which, I'll take the baby one. All right, I have some babies. And I think Andrew? I'm going to take the baby one as well. Babies seem good. Okay, all right. So we are ready to begin. Begin. Mm -hmm. That's terrible. I know. I'm sorry, guys. I apologize. No, oh, no. you should have seen shot this whole time. You're really? fine. They're oh. they're primed for it. Good time. <laughs> a lot of uh, Just bee buzzing puns. away. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Shakespeare got called out. I mean, it's it's been Shakespeare with bees, right? To be oh. or not to be. <laughs> Seems obvious now that you pointed out. <laughs> You're like Shakespeare. Oh. oh right. <laughs> that said, I've heard that there is a fair bit of buzz around this game, so. It, it's he's he's coming down, and so we have to go like this. Actually, but it's going over here, right? Cause yeah. It's oh yeah. Centric. You're you're the first player, so. Oh, it was it was bothering Omar. So I'm just helping. Okay. Him. <laughs> or he's saying 180. So at least now. What's it worth to you, Homer? No, flying, no, no. I'm kidding, it's flying. It's right. flying sideways. Um, so now. we need to go over what is the event. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, for mm -hmm. the spring cart, what what's the name of the event? First bloom. Oh, thank you. Yes. You are hygienic. I am a all. hygienic mm. bee, or my queen is. You said first bloom? Yes. Shh. First bloom, all tiles provide plus one pollen when foraged this month. So when you go out and forage, add plus one to the pink value on that, okay? All right, cool. Oh, and I'll go ahead and talk about the strategy tips that are in the game. Bees are more valuable than honey, okay? Don't hoard resources because babies. Pay attention to wild hives. They will become a nuisance, so they're worth victory points, but be careful. You, they will annoy other players, but they may end up being a nuisance to you as well. Mm -hmm. Scout more often than you think you need to. Scout being adding more tiles. The reason is when your opponents don't have access to your segment of the map, later on, having those extra map tiles around your hive can serve as a buffer if you have aggressive opponents. Don't be afraid to switch queens, it says. Uh, and remember, when you swarm, you can switch queens as well. And the best offense is a good defense. It, it talks about uh, don't being afraid to defend. And collect water sp sparingly, which I already stressed to you guys. And having a large number of bees may be costly in honey, but the more bees you have, the less likely your opponents are to attack, and you know the more you can actually do. So there's that. All right, sir, we have the event phase, plus one pollen to everything, so we go into the action phase. You have three Bs yeah. in which to do a single action. Might I suggest scouting or foraging? I was going to so. say, scouting seems to make sense. All right, so. so which side are you going to scout on? You have six options. <laughs> sure, we'll go for this. All right. <laughs> oh, I remember honeycomb cereal. That was good. Oh, that was tasty, yeah. Okay. So, let's see. I had a bowl of cereal Are you today. kidding me? I had rice uh, checks mm. mixed with corn checks mixed with Lucky Charms. Because I'm a five-year-old. All right. Well, oh, I got Brian, that was a lot of A ton of options there. <laughs> All right. So, one of these goes back. There we go. And that was a water. Mm -hmm. A water one. Oh, cool. Enjoy your water. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what were we just saying about water? Hi. Oh, yeah. Uh, place your bets. Um, Over-unders. 
I mean, bees sting. They do sting. Uh, three and a half. We'll go three and a half tonight. Really? You think it'll be more? I mean, I have a lot of experience with bees. They... Oh, by the way, Matt Shoemaker, who makes the game, he's a uh, librarian by trade and uh, a beekeeper for the last handful of years, hence why oh. the game. Nice. Yeah. Makes sense, right? Um, I hear resources are good, so I'm going to go ahead and forage <laughs> to start, okay? So, walking through the foraging action and making sure I don't mess this up here. Let me get to that. All right. So, foraging. So, unoccupied tile. I didn't actually mention that. Your bee actually comes out here. So, in other words, nothing else can go onto this tile because it's already been occupied. Whether it's one of ours or it, when the neutrals come into play, these will occupy uh, hexes that block you from foraging as well. So because it's on the same hex there, and it's a bloom hex, so I can get up to five and six because of the event. And, and I'm going to gain one disease mm -hmm. there, so I don't forget. So I'm going to get four honey. And Three pollen? Yeah, three pollen. Let's see if I'm Because it's this how up. many pollen per it's baby? It's one pollen per baby yes. for your brood. Mm -hmm. So that would leave me three spaces like so. And I still have a couple of workers to be able to do some stuff, like maybe going in here. Mm, you know what? A moment. I'm going to get one more honey. Right, because you can think about it. Mm, okay. The reason I'm doing this, and uh, okay, this is going to be essentially a learning game. It's yes. going to be far less competitive than yeah, let's see. anything. But uh, building wax to be able to, whenever I put a bee here, for every bee I put here, I have to get rid of two honey to be able to expand my hive a little bit. Yep. Mm -hmm. So that will give me empty spots more to be able to have more babies. So. But then again, if I extend too much, <laughs> right. then I'm going to swarm. You know what? What the hell? Let's go with it. I'm in. Let's do it. If you extend too much, you're going to swarm because... That no, that's number. Right, because yeah. everybody is using that yellow number, which right. starts out at five. And, and this is how much... It can be how many bees you can have before right. you swarm. It's up to that number. Well, no, well, you're getting bigger, so you can have a greater number of bees. Correct. So, right. uh, this is a good plan. Right. Hmm. hmm. Yes to the foraging. So I'm two for three. <laughs> just punch. I know. It just, so the, I, so I because I have the prolific sound. one, it's two for three. Correct. Uh, it's Versus the two one for, three, yeah. for one that you have, right? Uh, are you talking for whenever you... Uh, uh, Pollen for babies. Yeah. For the, you are one-to-one, one, right. I am two for three. Right. Right. So, math. Um, all right, so I'm going to forage. I can get up to five and five. So actually, put your bee on the tile that oh, you're sure. foraging on, because they're going to come back whether they're here or whether they're there. But they also occupy tiles so that whenever these guys come out or other players to attack or forage, they can't forage on those. And you cannot forage again on the same tile. Okay. So keep that in mind. Great. Okay? All right. Now let's walk through the resources, please. Okay. So I have three bees currently. I'm Checks going out. to have to pay one per two. So two honey are going to go away. So mm -hmm. I need two honey definitely. Okay. To feed these guys at the end of the round. Hey, Harvey, then why don't you ask that at the end of the game, if you would? I think that would be two. best when to talk about that. Okay. I could extend a couple and build, which is what I think I want to do. So I'm going to need four for that. And two bees. And that'll push me up twice. Yeah, no, I would put these two. Yeah. This is my plan. Um, so that would push me up to, And then... One, two, three, four. That means I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, six things open. 
There's a lot of babies. That's a lot of babies. But they might not all, if you Six can't things them. open, which I only have to, I need four pollen to make them live. So that would be, oh, I can't fit it all. <laughs> no, I know, that's the thing. Right, right? exactly, so here's the rub. one, two, three. So I'll take the max of pollen, which is five. Okay. Because I'm uh, use, I have a bloom in its spring. But it's six. I mean, not pollen. Max of five honey. Honey. So you want five. So three more honey. Mm-hmm. Here's your three honey, honey. <laughs> Terrible. And then I'll see myself out after this. <laughs> yeah. I'm no worse than chat. Okay. <laughs> And then, all right, so that leaves room for one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I don't want six. I'll take four of those. One, two, three, four. I don't, yeah, I'll take four. Okay, four pollen. So just to double check, this yep. one, it's if you spend two pollen and you have two brood, you get three bees? I will, or I will walk is it you back through it here. Just uh, I'd rather make sure it's crystal clear. So for oh, the prolific so queen, your hive gains new worker bees faster. When hatching brood, for every two brood that hatch into worker bees, you gain one extra worker bee that goes directly into okay. your hive. So you don't need the extra brood. It just won't just appear happens, nowhere. Right. Okay. It's basically a, a triplet. The third one just comes. Okay. Uh, we're going to forage. Seems like the thing to do. Okay. And uh, which which tile? Because you have actually two options. You could go with the smaller. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend I it. I don't think that's a good idea. All right. <laughs> yeah. I don't really need water. Right. Um, so my disease marker is going to go up, and I'm going to hey, Jung, get... Hey, it Jung, is that how you pronounce it? Five and Oh, don't four. forget to increase your might. Yep. <laughs> Increase your Was it? And it starts two. with. Yep, right. You had it yeah. right. Okay, so that's the Correct. first. Correct. All right. right. We're going to get five honey. And <gasps> four pollen, I think is the right number. I can't wait until next round and be like, oh, mistakes have been made by some of us. I'm not sure which one of us is going to say it, but I have a feeling it's going to be at least one of us. Okay. All right, so that was two of your three workers, obviously. So mm -hmm. there's your action. And we have no neutrals out there, so we're skipping all those. So I will go ahead and do as I said. I'm going to come down here to the build wax. I have two uh, bees, and it requires two hundred. I just realized I can't do that either. <laughs> and I was like, eh, that's not going to work. We're going to get one. Yes. <laughs> one yes. bee there. Same. There's and seven. there's going to be two honey expended. For doing so, which then means, there we go, done. I like where your head's at. Hey, Chip. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. That'd be two honey. Okay. Oh. Why'd you give me two honey? Oh, right, because I did the same thing. Yeah, you just did. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a day. I know. All right. I know. All right. Well, this may shock you, but. Doing the exact same thing. Okay, all right. <laughs> so it goes up to 11. Right, and this, this works out, right? This, this game is why goes I up to 11. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I'm going to scout for my last action here. And so I'm going to scout to uh, the 9 o'clock side as we're looking at it. We're going to go ahead and draw two tiles. And they're both wilt tiles. Which one do I like better? I like, I like that one. Oh. Again, it's just an aesthetic thing. Oh, wait, probably ought to put the beehive correctly for you guys. There we go. That one will go back in. J. Rexus Maximus. Yeah. Scouting seems good. What are the chances that everyone loses? Strong, I think. All right. Oh, it's Said so you. pretty. I'd like to give myself a little more credit than that, Marcus. <laughs> that makes. I got a will. All we'll right. See. Okay, so we are now done with all of our actions. So we go into the cleanup phase, and just to make sure that we don't forget a step on the cleanup phase. Oh, really? Are you new? There we go. All right, four steps. So whoever has the first player marker, it passes. Mm -hmm. There we go. And remove from the map any neutrals. There are no neutrals out there, so we're going to skip that. 
uh, get your bees back. Bzz, bzz, and bzz. All right. Don't they dance when they see each other? Oh, uh, what? Uh, that's another game. That's why I go dance. I think. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, any of our own mites that are still standing? Uh, because oh, we did forage, so technically these all should have been standing if you took a second action. But we lay back down now. Mm -hmm. There we go. And any player that has the hygienic queen and their Vero might is on the half space. So if he were there, he would just back up to the previous. But because she cleans it up. There yep. you go. All right. Cool. So that's it. So we go into a new round. So. First things first is the egg phase. And I'm actually going to get my notes to make sure we don't forget anything. I will say that I do wish that the game came with a little bit better of a player aid for other than just listing what the phases are. Um, but I digress. So count how many empty cells you have in your hive. So for instance, I have one, two, three, four. So one, two, three, four. JRX. I'm actually going to just move it over like that. And you can move this stuff in there. It doesn't matter just for simplicity. And Andrew also has four. Mm -hmm. So these swarm tokens, nobody gets one because we all had a brood or had brood. Still not natural. So we go into the second one, which is the feeding phase. One honey feeds two workers. So in this case, I'm going to need to spend two honey to feed my workers. Don't have to feed the brood because those haven't hatched yet. Jess? Um, one per two, yes. Yeah, so I have three, so I spend two. Mm -hmm. And I also have to spend two. Moment. It actually, yeah, the game, the rules do not say anything about rounding on this, so that's why we're assuming that you do have to spend a additional honey for, it's not round, or it's rounded not in your favor, as yes. it were. Okay. round up. All right, so everybody had enough honey, so nobody dies, none of our, uh, yeah, there we go. So we go into the brood phase. So brood hatches from the nest. Here we go. So it's one per pollen. I have four pollen, I have four babies. So all four pollen go away. Then check on the disease track. I have a zero, so all four of these bad boys come out. And here we go. Same. This looks like Mermies, fascist edition. That's funny, Stephen. Oh, right. And you get, yeah, two more. <laughs> Because you're queen. All right, Andrew. And two more. Because you pay two per three. You hatched four, so yes. you should get two more bees, right? That's how that works. Yeah. So not only do you pay two pollen per three. You're paying two pollen. You're paying two pollen for, for every two brood, but right. every two you hatch, you'll get a third one for free. You're paying one pollen per bee. But you get an additional B right. for every two that hatched. Oh. Does yeah. that make sense? Am I explaining that clearly? I was looking at this. I didn't realize there was more. So, no. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Exactly that. So how many pollen should I have? Four. Four. Because it's one per B. You yeah. just get an additional B for every two Bs that you made. Right. Okay. You hatched four, so you paid four, but then you get an you additional get, two. Right. So I also get two more. By the way, bees dance when back at the hive to give the direction of a nectar source to answer your question. Thank it you. It wasn't Hobbit. a question. That's what I was referencing. <laughs> I was telling you that. <laughs> Understood. Yes. Just, just passing the word. All right. And they can go where they want to. Yes. <laughs> so now we go into the swarm phase. So the swarm phase, I reckon there's going to be some swarms. So here we go. Check to see if a player's hive swarms one of two ways. So nobody has the swarm token, so we don't need to worry about that. The hive size exceeded. So my hive size, a swarm happens at greater than six. I happen to have greater than six means I'm gonna have a swarm. So I'm gonna do this and then we'll do it and this happens in turn order. So here we go. All right, 
Remove half my worker bees, round it down. So I have seven, so I'm losing three of these bad boys. I planned poorly here. Then I lose half of my honey, round it down. That'd be zero. Okay. Then choose a wild hive. I don't dare do it. So I will go ahead, I remove three bees. So I'm gonna do the spider web. There you go. All right, and the spider web will go right there. There is a legal placement in which to do so. Okay, so I re remove three bees. I set the strength at three. Now I decide whether or not I want to change locations. If I stay, I have to change my queen, but again, could be the same. Um, no, I think I want to stay there. So I'm going to stay, I have to change my queen. Well, I like having that, so I'm, oh, wait a minute. That might get awfully aggressive. It's awfully close. You got some time before it does anything, though. I, I, that's right, it doesn't happen during the spring. So we're okay with that, right? Yeah, I'm gonna keep my queen, but she goes inactive for the round. Okay. Um, Because I didn't spend two honey rounded up, oh, it would increase my high. No, it would still be at 11. So it doesn't make sense for me to switch locations. Now I score. Why? Can you talk that out? Why wouldn't, what's the uh, difference with okay. switch right. locations so that you just referenced? I, okay, so if I choose to switch places, mm -hmm. right, I, I get to skip, ooh. Hmm. You get to skip feeding next time. Yeah. Because you ate along the way. Yeah. You still have to change your queen, though, and it still won't. That's have okay. You know what? Time. I will. I will go ahead and go. Right. So you must keep your queen when you move. But you were keeping it in. I was. Right. So now we're going to switch places. I can still forage there, so that's okay. I know. No big deal. Yeah. So I get to get a skip feeding token, so yes. I don't have to feed for next round. Okay. And because I moved, I downsize. So I'm resetting my hive. I remove all my resources there. I drop my comb size back down to 10. Then bump my comb size back up for half rounded up. Well, I remove zero, so it actually stays there. But the reason- Half of what rounded up? Resources? Half of the honey that I spent. Yes, and you only spent one. But it said half rounded up, so that'd yeah. be one. Yeah. I think it's that's the one, one you spent, so that, that's what it's it counts, It's still one, because right? yeah, half it, rounded up is one. Good call, yeah, yeah. So that will bump back up yeah. there. There we go. All right, and then Bye, I Luke. swap positions, yeah. and now I score five victory points that's because we're in spring. That's the key. And your right. disease should reset, right? Correct, because I moved, whoop, that'll just go back up there. There we go, so Jess, up to you. Okay, so- Take care, Luke. How many bees do you discard again? Half All right, half down. rounded down. So half is four. Okay. Round it down. And then half your honey, round it down, zero. Okay. All right. Go back through it again. Which symbol yeah. would you like? <laughs> uh, dandelion, please. Okay. That'll be at strength four. All right. So then go ahead. There you go. And now. Yes, I would like to go. Okay. Are you sure? Because remember. Yes. Well, I don't want to feed next time and I'm going to just bump back up. So I don't see why I wouldn't. Okay. Well, uh, yeah. Fair point. All right. There's really. That's why I had you walk through it because I don't see. Sure. Okay. Why you would? I could be wrong. I don't see. There why you I go. Don't. So you lose the honey too. Somehow. Yep. That's the one honey. Don't feed next time. And, you're and you just discard down, your honey. Up. Right. And then you bump back up. Exactly. Yeah. And score five points for yeah. green. That's the key. Because points, right? Yeah, yeah, I don't see why. And your disease resets, so it goes all the way yep. back up there. Yep. Harvey, okay. so it's done, right? Pax Premier type scoring, I had a five point lead, game over. <laughs> Boom, all right, have a good night. All right, Andrew. Okay, well, uh, same thing's happening to me. So, for going away, uh, we'll do a mushroom. I thought about that one. Again, it's no different mm -hmm. than Aesthetics. I'm gonna stay where I am though. I okay, so you're going to stay, so that means you may change queen yes. if you wish. So I think I am gonna change to the hygienic one. Okay, so flip your might board. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, move it up one. 
Uh, wait, I thought it was. No, it starts at the very top. At the very top. Oh, it there starts we, there. There you go. Oh, okay. There you go. All right. Nice. Uh, yeah. And so done. Not, so not, and yep. now score score your points. Oh yes, and five points. Because he does not get the do not feed token, and that's that. Mm -hmm. So now we go into the event phase. Flip. Okay. All right, and I will look up exactly what it says. Perfect weather. Oh, nice. So perfect weather says, on your first turn this month, meaning each of us, on each of our first turns this month, spawn a wild hive of strength three on a tile up to three spaces away from your own hive, if you can. <laughs> Which right now, the only way that would happen is if we were to scout correct. on first So turn. it's up to you if you wish to, because again, Attacking and probably defending in the is first worth turn. points. Yeah, probably not. <laughs> okay, so we could. Just throwing that out. You remember that plus one pollen has now gone away because it's now been covered because we're in April. All right, so now we go into the action phase. Let's see if we can plan a little bit better than we did last turn. And remember, no babies next round. Mm -hmm. Okay, everybody's inactive on that. And no feeding for most of us. Okay. It's all right, I get enough bees right now. I really want to scout, but I'm not gonna. So, oh, these guys are casualties. Um, they actually are right here hanging out. Yours as well, Andrew. You have yep. some oh, yeah. Right. Board. Yep. Um, okay, so we have to forage. So, going to one away. So, this guy would come out and forage. He's gonna forage there. Uh, limit of five and five, which there's no babies, right? Yeah. What are you using those pollen for? <laughs> oh, yeah, there's no babies, so you might as well just take it. I'm thinking about it. Mm. Um, because even if I took a fifth pollen, I'd be okay. You know what? Oh, no, it's five honey. I can't take a sixth honey. I want to, though. Um, I always want honey. Yeah. And I don't have to feed, so... But you will eventually, and maybe you don't have to forage. Right, exactly, right? Uh, and since I'm not going to get more workers for next round... Do I take that fifth pollen? I'll probably regret it, but I'm not going to. Done. Oh, and... Uh, Mm -hmm. There we go. Mm -hmm. Oh, you switched spots, right, Jess? I what? You switched... Uh, oh, yeah, we have yeah, to switch so. those. Thank you. Forgot about that. I did move. But I'm going to go here, which is still one. Mm -hmm. Let's get on here. He's in dangerous territory. Uh, definitely taking five. Okay, so to answer the question in chat here, if you leave, okay, discard all your resources and reduce your disease level to zero and set your comb size to 10, then increase your comb size by one for every two honey discarded this way, rounded up. So we discarded one, so therefore it bumped up. Does that make sense? Mm. Exactly. Omer's right. All right, we're doing the build, same thing. Build. Okay. Uh, definitely taking five, honey. I don't think I want the pollen, though. Ooh. That's, yeah, yeah, you still have I don't think it. I need it right now. Okay, so all right. Good, and my disease goes up one. All right, so I am going to, uh, not for sorry, scout. And I'm going to scout just above, up here at 2 o'clock. Uh, okay, I will take the, I like that wheat better. There, done. Hmm. I think I do. The rule book actually does a very good job of explaining the game, I feel like, but... The, the rating can be a little complex. Just a lot of little steps, that's all, but it's not, yeah. Ooh. 
get more stuff. Yeah, two and two, please. Yes, ma'am. Two and two. Mm -hmm. Sir? I will scout. Um, we'll put it here. Where? Oh, in oh, between. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, harvest and harvest. <laughs> uh, we'll take this one. More fall. Okay. Appropriate. All right. I, I really think I'm going to scout again, I think. I'm also tempted to... I have the honey, and I don't have to feed. Yeah, what I'm... Actually, I'm going to go ahead and build wax. So I'm going to go there, spend two honey, and go ahead and boost that up. Now to 12. Done. So if I'm building and I want to do two, I place two at the same time? Correct. Okay. And it's four honey. Yep. Double boom! All right, sir. Uh, I think I'm gonna. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna raid. I'm gonna raid this neutral. Well, here we go. All right, so we're gonna use the flow chart here to start. Okay, so we're gonna walk. It, it is not a wild hive. All right, so who is raiding, player or wild hive? The player is. So now, choose a target, and literally, I am going to walk through this because I think this is important. It looks really uh, confusing, but it's actually done really well. Choose a target, three or few t fewer tile tiles from your hive, and that you have not raided this turn. Mm -hmm. Obvious choice. Okay. Is this a player hive? No. Assign the number of bees to the raiding party. It's going to be one. Okay. Roll raid dice, so it's only going to be one raid die. And then the strength is equal to the minimum number of bees currently in the raid party or the raid die total, whichever is smaller. Which it's going to be one it's because be one. they only put one. So the strength is one. Mm -hmm. Now, keep the result. Obviously, he's going to. Mm -hmm. So yes, do not discard the raid die. Okay, who is the target? A wild hive. Reduce the wild hive strength by the strength of the raiding party. So it'd be one. Sacrifice raid party bees to further reduce the wild high strength. Do you want to reduce that? I think I actually do. Okay, if the answer is yes, for each bee sacrifice, decrease the wild hive strength by one. Okay, now steal honey up to the amount of wild high strength reduced. So that would be two, two honey. And then gain one disease for doing so. Yep. And then, is the wild hive its strength zero? No, the raid ends. There you go. That makes sense, right? That's it does. Actually it's a really just all these different little, yeah, little yeah. stops. Things. Okay. It's a lot of little steps. Yep. Yeah. Okay. That's it. All right, cool. All right, so congratulations on the first successful <laughs> raid, sir. All right. Yeah, it's not well, dead yet, but yeah. getting there. To be clear, it really wasn't a successful raid. A successful raid kills, the, yes. you get points for. You didn't get points. Yes. Only if you remove it from the map, which means it reduce it to zero. I got some honey out of it, though. All right, so we're going to go ahead and a scouting we will go. And we're going to go ahead and go down here. A bloom, ooh, bloom or a harvest? I think we gotta go bloom, right? There we go. J. Rexus Maximus. Yeah, scouting sounds good. And where are you, where are you scouting? All right. Um, all right. What are our options? Uh, bloom or water, which may actually Might be, be flexibility later. Some at some point. Um, and really, there's only one more round where this is super great. So that's awesome, yeah. Harvey. That's really cool, man. Just in case. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm just, I'm going to build twice, so four honey to go up to 13. All right, uh, out of work, I'm out of workers, Jess is out of workers, Andrew's out of workers, here we go. So, step one, 
There are no neutrals on there. That's step two. Get your workers back is step three. And step four is if you have a hygienic, then if it's at a half marker, pump it back to there. There you go. Boom, done. All right, so now, since this is the first time we've done this with no feeding and everything else, excuse me, everybody here swarmed, so no babies. Mm -hmm. So skip it, so no egg phase. So we go into the feeding phase. I don't feed, Jess doesn't feed, we're done, Andrew does. Yep. And it's one per, or I'm sorry, one for every two. Yep, so two honey. All right, done. So here's the feeding phase. So now we go into the brood phase, which again, nope, not happening. Uh, let me rephrase this, let me back up. One minor detail, it's insignificant. It's bad. Technically, one, two, three, four, five, the egg phase does happen. Yeah. But now they go back because they don't have babies, because they can't hatch, and then this goes away. Right. Mm. Again, it really, it, it doesn't... You don't need to do it, but yeah. The important thing to remember is, if you filled this, you're still going to swarm because right. you, you can still lay swarm. any eggs. Yeah. That's the difference. Does that make sense? Yes. Right. You, you have to... You, don't be you have to lay the eggs. Yep. Yeah. Even if they're not going to hatch. So everybody goes back to the play side yes. of it. Now things are back to normal. Okay, so now the swarm phase. I am at four, max six, I'm good, no swarm. Oh, sorry, Jess is first. I apologize. What is your swarm number at? The yellow number on 13? Um, seven. Okay, so you're at I'm or fine. below. And Andrew? Seven. And I'm good to go. So we skip the swarm phase. We go into the event phase. There we go. Andrew, event phase. Uh, it's Jess, right? I'm oh, right, new card, sorry, yes. Just, oh, new uh, card, okay. J My bad. <laughs> That's all. Uh, what's the name? Ooh. Uh, beginning of it's the It's going to be one flow? extra honey if you have a bloom. Yeah, that seems like what that means. Beginning, beginning of, of the, the flow, flow right? is one extra honey for a bloom. Sure, origin. iconography. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. pretty clear. It is. Yeah. All right, there you go. That's exactly it for this round. Keep in mind... Quick reminder, mm -hmm. at the end, and actually before we do this, I think it would be a good time to go ahead and talk about this. We're going to join the maps mm -hmm. now at the end of this round, okay? Um, in clockwise order, beginning with next month's first player, meaning beginning with Andrew, he's going to connect the group of map tiles containing their hive to another group of map tiles. The important thing is, you can rotate any of these that you want in any order, but they can't overlap or anything, and they have to join a side or mm. one edge, and that's it. Okay. You're not allowed to rearrange. You can't overlap, and you can't. Ro uh, and you are allowed to rotate any other groups. That's it. So this is going to become one big one. Okay. Keep that in mind. That's it. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, I think I want to forge, and that will go. Here. <laughs> mm -hmm. What? I'll tell you when you're done. Go ahead and forage. Well, now you've distracted me. Okay, all right. Place, so, so this that's isn't the helpful case. At Here all. we go. So Brian says, uh, "I wonder." Dramatic foreshadowing. I wonder if we're gonna hit 750 patrons tonight. <laughs> hey, hey, look at that. So, cheers, Brian. Thank you. Cheers, Brian. Cheers. Thank you for the support, sir, very much. Brian, number 750, well done. All right. Good man. Be like Brian, y'all. Mm. 50 more, we get PTZ cameras. All right. Or a camera. I, oh, this is, how many bees am I gonna have? How many do <laughs> I need to feed? So the only thing it tells me on here is that I only, what is it? There's two pollen per three babies. But you're also saying every th okay. three gets two. Allow me, if I may. Yes. I'll do this visually. No, I just need to know the number. I don't recall. No, I. It, it, you're gonna. It's one pollen per bee that's in your nurse, right? But then after you pay the pollen, you're going to get it a third bee. How does it say that? Oh, for every two pollen you pay, yes. you get a third bee. 
They, yeah, you'll get three bees for two pollen. So yeah, I'm trying <laughs> to do this, this is why I asked the question. <laughs> Doesn't that's a really unclear way of saying that? But I get it. That was the most yes. Okay. There you go. <laughs> that's not how that works. Okay. No, that's exactly how that works. No, it's just get an extra B per two. But yes, sure, you can explain it the round way. If okay. You can. <laughs> that's why I was confused because I was like, why would the pollen uh, at a thousand BT? Right. I get the tattoo. So I'm still hey, paying one what's for up, one. Man? Oh, I don't. I have no idea. Be like Brian. I like that. Hmm. I don't know. Oh, have fun playing right. Indonesia, Reg. So that's five of those. Hey, I'm Brian. I will pee. never complain, man. I appreciate whenever and whatever. So thank you very much. All right, can I walk through this? Yeah, absolutely, please. Or is it their stuff in chat? Nope. Okay. So, I have five. I have to pay one per two. So, I'm going to have to pay three because it rounds up, right? Some things round up, some things round down. For feeding? Yes. Okay. When you feed, it's not in your favor. Yes, round right. up. Right. So, I need three for that. Then I'm going to have those. Or maybe I use them to bump. Sure. Um, hey, Mark. How many babies am I going to have? If I use those to bump, then they'll die. Goodness knows. Hmm. Uh, I don't know. Give me two pollen. There's two, I can't do it. Okay. Um, I'm gonna scout. Oh, uh, we'll scout. Uh, where do I want to scout? Um, here. Okay, we got a wilt and a water. I'll take the wilts. Okay. Oh, I went up. A rating we will go, a rating we will go, I own a rating we will go. All right, so rating with two, so that means I get one die. May I? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's small enough, that's sure. all right. All right, wow, that was terrible. <laughs> I can't re. Oh, I don't think it makes sense to re-roll it against no, it the doesn't. wild hives. All right, so we will go one. Wow, terrible. All right, so uh, we are going to keep the result. Okay, wild hive. Reduce the wild hive by one. Okay, goes to two. And then. All right, this is the spider web. Okay, yeah. so there I just sacrificed two bees. Okay, so. It drops the drops three. So I get three honey mm -hmm. for doing so, and two uh, two points for yep. successfully uh, defeating the hive. Well done. Thank you. It's a costly victory. <laughs> a, uh, a Pyrrhic victory, mm -hmm. if you will. So <laughs> that will come off the board, and I'll okay. just put it over here for later. But that's done. Mm, build. Wax. One. One, two. Where did the. Oh. Okay. I will forage on the bloom. I'm definitely taking the six honey because honey seems good. Um, question is how much pollen do I want? Uh, okay. If I spend the four. That uh, four. Mm, I don't want to go above. Yeah. Okay. Oh, and I gain a disease for doing that. I apologize. Forgot. All right. I. Yeah, I'm taking four pollen. 
and my disease goes up. I figure I'm going to have babies, so that was that was uh, how I justified it. And I will go ahead and scout, and I will scout up above. We're going into summer, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, looking again at fall, I'm going to go ahead and take the harvest. Here we go. Done. Scouting there. Uh, I have played High Frontier. I don't know if the others have. Jess, have you? Popcorn. Random. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> let me. I definitely am not. All right. Okay. All right. I'm going to build out the hive. So four honey to make this 15. Two babies now, huh? Four? That would be four. Oh, there it is. That'll work. So we will build wax, spend two honey, and we'll go ahead and go there, which now is five babies, four of which will hatch. Oh yeah, that'll work. And built wax, nope, didn't clean, never mind. Doesn't stand up. Only when you clean does it stand up. Right. I don't know. All right, so currently I have one, two, three, four, five. So it doesn't really, I'm gonna pay two, but they're gonna die if I don't feed them, right? They're you not going to come into my hive. No, the babies do not have to be fed until the following round because right. feeding happens. No, not feed. I'm sorry, if I don't have pollen for them. Correct. But the extra, the bonus babies you get don't need the pollen. Correct. Okay. They're just free. But they're per pollen I pay, or two I pay. Yeah, for every two. So I'm going to get two bonus babies if I pay these. If you paid so you're limiting by your So you're pollen. getting six yeah, yeah. babies. Correct. Right, yeah, most of you get six. Yeah. Max. Um, and that's 11, which means I swarm. I don't want to. We're going to be playing uh, High Frontier 4th Edition when we Ten. play it in a couple months. So, how do I mitigate that? Fill spaces, I guess. Yeah, and that'll kill them. I don't So where do I want to put you? And you can forage where your hive is, remember. Yep. But that's only two and two. Yeah. Two and two. Uh, two and two, yes ma'am. Oh, but if I have that pollen. And Probably done, still done, and done. All right, end of round. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Clean up, so. Total brain cramp. Help me out. So four steps. Pass. Thank you. Thing. That's the first one. Thank you. Uh, second, get your workers back. That's a lonely hive for right now. Uh, no neutrals. And reset your might if need be. Hmm. Yep, that's it. All right. All right, so now we join. Right. So starting with the first player, so, sir. Okay. Um, yeah, I have no idea how to, like, what is the strategy I would here? prefer this further away from me. I'm sure you not would. Not more than, or, <laughs> actually, it's not too bad. Actually, I don't mind, because it's only a straight That's the thing, I'm not so sure, I'm okay like, I can kind of kill it myself and be fine with that. Um, oh. What do I want to be close to? We had hives. We we skipped their turns. Well, they were. It's still spring. Oh, good call. Thank yeah. you. No, we didn't. I knew exactly what we were doing. You passed. It's not good summer job. yet. Yeah. Right. It's about Next time. To, yes. It will exactly. matter. Yeah. All right. Take care, Mohammed. Thanks for hanging out, man. Well, May is still spring. All right. I guess I want to be next to. No, because it will cover. So that was oh, May. Okay. March, April, May. Right. It's showing you. There you All go. Right. right. In the current month, it shows. Okay. Maybe we do. This. 
And only one side has to touch, so you could, you could, yes. I could do this, and I'm next to a bunch of stuff, which may or may not be good, but I don't know. Okay. <laughs> um. Hmm. I'm currently within three of that wet one, so that's not too bad. I'm going to leave that for you guys to mess with. So I think I'll do like so. Yeah, it's too far away for me to get to and too far for them to get away from. I'm good with that. All right, so we have joined. Mm -hmm. It is now the beginning, so we do the egg phase again. So, how many empty spaces do you have? Two, One, two, three, four, five. These are definitely not all going to hatch. Good. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Every, uh, so everybody had babies or brood, so we're good. So now feed one per two. Mm -hmm. So I owe one honey. I owe two. Round it up or down on that one? Uh, oh. Not in your favor. Right, up, I guess it would be. No, honey. Honey, honey. honey. Oh, honey. Yeah. For these guys. Correct. Okay. So three of them. Yeah. All right. And now we go into the brood phase, which is the one that's not listed. I apologize. All right, so the brood phase. Do it this way. There we go. So brood hatches, so a uh, number hatch, it's one per pollen. Mm -hmm. So I have four, so one of these guys isn't going to make it. So these four yeah. will spend pollen. I also got four. And then check your disease level. So I have none, so all of these guys are coming out. Yep, I also have none. All right, so I pay three. Do I put the extra one in first? It, it, it just comes. It matters because somebody's, well, I guess it doesn't super matter. i got to kill one. It come the, the the extra comes straight into there. Okay. There you go. And then one dies. There you go. Disease. And then you get those. Okay. Yep. Bueno. So there's the brood phase. So now we go into the swarm phase, starting with the first player. And so um, what's your number? My number is eight, so I'm oh. good. Okay, so no no swarm for you. Mm -hmm. My number is seven. I have six. We're good. Jess? Eight. I have eight. All right, so no swarm. So we go into event phase. So we can actually take the spring deck off so it's not... Sure. So it's... Oops. There you go. So it's not confusing to folks. All right. And our first summer card. Summertime. A dry spell. Okay. So, getting uh, a dry spell. Overheating is in effect. So, this is where the cool hive, I will re-go over that. Also, wet tiles provide minus one honey and minus one water when foraged. So, wet tiles suck. They are <sighs> no honey. But you so it, need water now. You, you yeah. do need water. So, the max water that you can get from wet the tiles is two. So, to go back over the cool... All right, so assigning to the cool hive is for every five rounded up, you have to assign one here. And for each one that you assign there, requires one water. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so for instance, rounded up, so I would need two bees here and two water to be able to not have to worry about the overheating. If you cannot cool the hive before the end of the month, you cannot hatch any brood the following month. So your queen gets turned off. Yeah, that's bad. <laughs> okay. Okay. So it is your honor. Yeah. Uh, I think I need to forge immediately <laughs> over here. Which really sucks for me. So I'm so. not having... Oh, no. That, uh, that's not necessarily the end of the world. So I get two water. Okay. Uh, no honey. How far can you get? That. Three. So you can't get to the water. Um, but. Oh, okay. And I could take a pollen... Um, sure. Why not? I'll figure out if that's a good idea later. <laughs> All right. Well, a scouting we will go. <laughs> Draw well. <laughs> a bit parched. <sighs> not there. Okay. Well. 
<laughs> we will go ahead and put a, a harvest. There. Done. Forge. So that'll be one pollen and two water, please. Oh, could you get them for? Yep, please. One pollen, one pollen, and two water. There you go. Hmm. All right. I am going to forge again on this wilt space. So disease goes up. Back off, yo. <laughs> Back off. Uh, oh, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Oh. Hold on. Before you go, back that up. What's up? Neutrals now go. Oh, right. We forgot about that. All right. Yes. So here we go. Our first time, now the hives will go. Oh, goodness. All right. Okay. So first player, whichever is closest to their hive, will begin. Okay? Yep. Uh, I believe that's the priority. Says, uh, if there are multiple wild hives in play, the current first player decides in which order. I apologize. So your choice, dandelion or mushroom. Well, it's the closest one. To, is it the closest one to me? Because that's that. No, one. it's your choice. Oh, okay. Then um, it doesn't really matter. But I guess since Jess isn't here, we'll do this one. Okay, so mushroom it is. So there is a flow chart, kind of a priority chart that happens here. Okay, that is in the rule book. I did not print this out, so it is. We are in summer, so we're going to follow this flow chart now for the order in which. And the, it starts at the first one. If it can take that action, it does. If not, mm -hmm. you go to the second one, so on and so forth, until it can take an action. So we're going to go through all these. It's going to take a little bit of time, but it's worth it. There are six. If the wild hive strength is at maximum 14, it will swarm. Well, it's not, so we can just move on. If overheating is in effect, it is. Place a neutral worker, so it's going to be a mushroom, worker, so that's going to be one of these guys right here. Place a neutral worker token on the wet tile closest to, wild, to the wild hive's location up to three spaces away that has not been foraged yes. yet this round. Which there isn't one. It is. So we skip it. So we cannot do that. Locate the hive close. So we go to step three. Mm -hmm. So it would have been a wet tile, but it cannot because those are all been foraged. So we go to step three. Locate the hive closest to the wild hive. Yep. <laughs> right here. Bring it. Up to three spaces away that this wild hive has not yet raided this round. Compare the strength of the wild hive and the target hive. Okay? If the target hive is a player hive, its strength is the number of unassigned worker bees plus the number of worker bees assigned to the defend action. So there are none to your defend, mm -hmm. but you have? Six. Okay, so your strength is six. If the target hive's strength is no more than two higher than the wild hive, it's strength is two. It is. Then the wild hive will raid that target hive. Place a neutral worker token on the map, da, 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 and then there would be a raid. Okay. But that's not the case. Right. So we go to the fourth option. Place a neutral worker token on the wilt tile closest to the wild hive's location, up to three spaces away, that has not been forged yet this round. Basically the wild hives will not mm. go on a suicide mission. So a wilt tile closest within three. Okay. So it looks like it's going to be that one or that one, your choice. Right. Go ahead. Uh, and I think I should just pick the one that's furthest away from me because I want maybe want to use that one. Right. So we'll do that one. Okay, there we go. Done. So now the dandelion will happen. And a moment on this. Also, the first time each month that a wild hive places a neutral worker token on the bloom on a bloom, wilt, or harvest tile by foraging, which is what it just did, increase its strength by one. Oh, okay. There we go. All right? Yep. Okay, so now we're going to the dandelion one. Strength 14, no. Overheating is in effect, but no water. Mm -hmm. Okay. Locate the closest hive. Here. Is it more than two? It's four. And that looks like more than two, yep. so we skip that one. So we go to four, wilt tile, 
looking for a dandelion worker. Well, the closest so that has the, not been foraged. Yes. It's going to be where the hive is. Boom, done. And that can no longer be foraged. And its strength turn. goes up. And its strength goes up one. Boom. Now it begins the player's turns right. again. So now, the more turns you take, the more turns they take. Keep that in mind. Yeah, and here we go. They're going to become a problem real soon. And um, it just became a coin game. <laughs> hey, Adam. Mm. Oh, that's interesting. Should I go fight him? I should probably go fight him. How many do I send? Uh, all right. Yeah, if it's not on the board, you don't have to mess with it. Like, it won't take turns. Hmm. Strength three now. I could send three. But or you could that. send five and get two dice. True. Not being... I, I'm, <laughs> no, legit, right? If you really want to make sure that you crush it... Yeah. Well, I could, yeah. Mm. Plus, it's worth points. It is worth points. points, and I don't want to leave it weak for someone else to just wipe out. Yeah, screw it. All right, we're going to put three. We're going to raid uh, the neutral hive with three. Okay, so, so here we go. So roll one die. Yeah, I'll just do it here. And that's a four. Lowest number is nice. three. <laughs> it hits three. It lowers three. You get up to three honey so and two points. Absolutely take the honey. So see, after that first time, now it's a lot more streamlined, right? Yep. So I get two points and the hive is gone. And so does that stay there? Because they forge there? Probably, right? A moment. I will double check because I'll be honest, I can't remember. Uh... Oh, am I... Uh... Yes, you go up. Because... Disease goes up because I raided. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, it does not, right? Because at the end of the round, during the cleanup, it goes like a resource. Yeah. They, yeah. they already forged. They already forged. Right, they already took stuff. Yeah. Exactly. So you know, all that is, that, those aren't workers. It just shows that it's right. been forged. You can't take any more pollen from nope. there is what it's saying. They cleared yep. it out. There sure you go. Um, <laughs> I mean, you can reach this one now if you wanted to. But it's been uh, oh, forged. Oh, that's when it been forged, yeah. I don't care that I can reach it. <laughs> there you go. Hey, hey. hey! Oh, I didn't say. Here. Okay. I apologize. I'm cheating. <laughs> there we go. Mm. <laughs> and how many, uh, what's the die differential? You have it over there. I just can't see it. Oh. So if I place five, I can, I get ro two rolls. Correct. Two dice. Two right. Roll. Dice. And it's one to four. And what's the distribution? I haven't studied the dice, the distribution. Uh, Adam, or Adam, really? <laughs> Andrew? Changing his name. Think. So I think it's basically uh, just a, like a D4 because there's three of each number on here. It's just the you know D4 suck. So. And so then yeah, the, the so this one's at a five. How much would I have to roll? You add it's, the. It's the smallest number, either your die roll or the number of bees that you send. Right. And with two dice, you add the number. You four. add the, they're cumulative. Yeah. This oh so if I send five, it's gonna go away. It dies. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Well. Uh, I mean, you can grow, if you oh, roll, I could roll, roll like a one and a one or something. Yeah, yeah. no, yeah. no, no. I get two die, but. But then, if you do roll like crap, you can sacrifice bees, they die, but it boosts to the strength. Right. And you could kill one bee to re roll also. Right. Mm -hmm. So okay. keep that in mind. But if you go down to four bees, you lose, you only have one die total. Correct. Yeah. There is that for a re roll. Yeah. <laughs> Which, yeah. <laughs> All right. Other one. Uh, that's defending. Sorry. There you go. So two dice. Our first two die attack. Uh, <laughs> and two. that's exactly what we said. <laughs> oh my god. So okay. if you sacrifice oh. three bees. Nope. All right, done. <laughs> so you still will get two honey two. and it goes yep. down two. Uh, but okay, but you don't get points for that. If you sacrifice three bees. I'm going to roll two ones again. You want to see it? Jess, listen yes. to me. If you sacrifice three bees, yes. they just die. And that yes. goes down to zero. But you lose There's three bees. There's no rolling. Why? When That's you're fighting in a neutral hive, you can it's plus kill a strength. Yeah. You can just, it dies a hero, so there's no rolling, is what I'm trying to explain. But that's a lot you. of bees to die. <laughs> All right, I'll do that. All right. So now you can get up to five honey, if you would like, because right. that was sure. the strength. How and many would you like? Five. Points. And that one is gone. There we go. And now, there's no neutral hives, mm -hmm. it's your turn. There we go. 
Okay. Um, yeah, that's dealt with. Hmm. And the score track, I think these are a hair smaller than the actual sizes, but. Okay, so if I get, I'm going to four. There's been a lot of discussion here this Go week on. about whether it's B lives or B lives. We think it's B lives. We will only know summer. That kind of makes sense. Mm. Or B, yeah. For each bee, sacrifice this way. Okay. Mm. If you wish, by sacrificing worker bees from your rate, mm. you may reduce the wild hive strength even further if you wish, by sacrificing worker bees from your raid party. Okay? And for each one that you do, reduce the hive strength by one. So basically, that's what you did. You sacrificed three. They did a kamikaze mission. Lowered it by yeah. three additional. Because I took two and then three. There you go. So that was the fact. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, Oh, this is hard. Um, did I lose a beef somewhere? I thought I had eight. Oh well. Mm. I think you only had seven. Yeah, I, I had think seven. you only had seven. Okay. Um, so is this making sense to everybody? Are you guys able to follow along? All right, I think I need to forage. I need to forage. That's, that's definitely the case. Um, the question is, I'm gonna go on a wilt tile. Not this one or this one. Um, I don't know. I guess we'll go this one. Yeah. <laughs> so I can get three honey and three pollen. <laughs> More like bee dies, the way the game works. <laughs> yeah, okay. Three honey. It's, it's tough to plan this out. Three pollen. Um, oh, but right, I need to, uh, <laughs> uh, how do I fix this? Hey, Chisel. Mm. That's fine. All right, so three done. honey, three pollen, and I'm done. All right, we're going to forage. Hmm, that's two away. So that cost me two bees. So we're, we can't get any honey, thanks to that. So we're going to get uh, one pollen and, more importantly, a couple of waters. Done. Actually, I'm going to work better. Uh, yeah, we'll just go there. Cool behind. Here we go. Oops. Uh, same for me. Well? Hmm. And that's that for me and Jess. And we're done. All right. So first things first. One, we go ahead and clear these guys. Take your workers back. And any half mites for the hygienic folk. Mm -hmm. And did everybody cool? How do we check that? Everybody did cool. Okay. All right, we go into the egg phase. Oh my. I'm having a lot of eggs, but I'm gonna just save it and just do this. <laughs> <laughs> Jess? Um, oh. All right, so I get three. Is that what we're doing? Yep. Yep. And I also get three. Here, I get this many. <laughs> three, six, I get nine. Okay. Uh, so we go into the feeding phase. I need to feed one honey for every two bees. I have six, so that's three honey, and you must feed if you can. Yep. I've got seven, so I feed four honey. And the brood? I pay my one pollen. Everybody doesn't hatch except for this one. No disease. Done. All right. I paid two, so there's three. Right? No, I paid no, pay three. three. Yeah. And I get. And you'll get an extra one. Extra. One extra. 
There you go. So four hatch. Yes, but except then I have two disease, die. Yeah. so two die. Yep. And three and three. If you're deciding if you want to forage, the question is to be or not to be, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. <laughs> All right, so we are done. Uh, now we swarm. So I'm at seven and seven. I'm good. Jess? Um, eight and I'm good. Uh, yep, yeah, I'm at ten, so I am going to swarm because right. eight is my number. Too. All right, here we go. Swarm party. All right, remove half your bees, round it down. Mm hmm. Half your honey, round it down. Mm -hmm. Choose a wild hive. And it mm -hmm. must be placed within three, your choice. Let's go with this acorn. Okay, acorn. Mm -hmm. And, yep, within three. That's interesting. Um, and the strength is going to be five for the acorn. Hmm. Don't do it. He did it. Okay, so strength of five. Now you decide. Do you want to stay or go? Oh, that's uh, interesting. If you stay, you have to change your queen, but it's going to be inactive. No yeah. matter what. I, I, don't, uh, I don't think I want to totally get rid of this hive. I already built a lot into it, so I'm going to stay, I think. Okay, so just you can change queens, but it's going to... <sighs> Man... Remember, this helps with attacking and defense. Just a reminder. Right. Um, so that queen is, it's aggressive. During any raid, whether you're attacking or defending, increase your strength by one for every two of your worker bees involved. Um, including whenever you go under the defend action. Sure, we'll try it. Okay. See what happens. So that's Very aggressive. Uh, All right. So he stayed. So now, three points. Yes. And um, my disease is halved, I think. Is that right? Because you stayed. But this also is going to flip. Right, so correct. So it goes back to, to here. Because it was on the second zero, right? But it's halved, so it goes up one. one. There you go. Yeah. OK. OK. Uh, so that's the only swarm. So event. All right, we've got heat wave. Oh, good. <laughs> More cooling involved. So heat wave <sighs> is overheating's in effect. All tiles minus one honey when foraged. I don't like the summer. The summer's bad. So <laughs> um, we will only know summer, and boy does it suck. <laughs> so wilt tiles will give two honey and three, but also, uh, well. Well, I need water. Yeah, it's going to be two either way. So we're going to go ahead and come out. That's going to be two tiles to forage. So that's going to be minus one honey, so no honey. It'll be one pollen, correct? Mm -hmm. It's just honey, right? Yeah. Uh, it'll be one pollen and up to three water. How many can there be in summer? <laughs> now I'm just taking the two water and one pollen. Done. Yeah, one extra water isn't going to help, right? That's right. the thing. <laughs> Not for a hive this size. Well, yeah. Check that. Hold on. I only have five right now. I only need one. Well, you have two over there. Seven. Ah, there's seven. I yeah. forgot about that. Thank yes. you. I'm like, oh, there's only four. <laughs> that would have been a faux pas. Done. J-Rex. Hmm. Interesting. Just a quick reminder for everybody within range of this. Yeah. They will, they will go for the wet tiles first. Right. If you do not, that will be the first thing they do. Right. 
I was more looking at, like, there's a way to be mean here. Like, I can just use two to go here. He then has to use three yeah. to get over here. That that, that is a legit, yeah, that, I mean, yes. And it doesn't give him enough to feed his hive, so then he has to use all his workers to forge. <laughs> <laughs> <That's legit. laughs> you did put the hive next to me. He did. <laughs> I think that's totally valid. So two here. All right, because two away. Yeah. All right, so wet. Um, wet right now gives three and a pollen. Correct. I'll so this that. is max. Yeah, I'll take it. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> hmm. Turn order matters here yes. when you do this. Okay. All uh, right. So this is interesting. Should I risk scouting and hope I get a wet tile, or should I just eat the three workers? And I'm good with scouting because that puts more tiles. And out. in case, because I know uh, the heavy cardboard, the, the crew will ask, there are 14 wet tiles, 22 of each of the others. Mm. Just yeah. because I know that's going to be asked, there you go. That's not good odds. Mm. So if I spend three doing that, I have two left. Which, what can I do with that? I mean, scouting's good. I'm all for like... Oh, and that's foraging, so I go up. Mm -hmm. Correct, yeah. Oh, and I foraged as well, good call. And do we, you said we put them this way? No, only when you clean. When you clean, oh, okay. it, it you would, prevents okay. yeah, one. Right, it'll yeah. mark that you can, yeah, prevent disease. Um, hey, hey, with the beeples. God, that's terrible odds. I really can't. But really you want can't. to. I really want to try, but I don't think I can risk it at this point. Not with this few Oof. bees. Okay. All right, so we're going here. All right. Um, I'll just put the other two up here. So, disease goes up, I get two... Oh, but I can't even cool the... Oh, wait, right, oh, wait, wait, this is actually... Hold on. I can't breed anyway. So yeah, there's no point. good point. I don't even oh, care about you're breeding. Turned. Yeah. Because that's point. all it does is make it so you can't breed? That's what, uh, if you do not cool, yeah. I believe so, right? Who cares? Oh, okay. that's bad. Never mind. Yeah, that's fine. we are fine. <laughs> all right. We forgot about that. Right. Yeah. Um, okay. Hmm. So, and how is it? So, the wild hive is going to look at Jess first? Uh, cool the hive before the end of the month. You cannot hatch any brood in the following okay. month. Yeah, it just turns your queen off. Oh. Right? Five. Okay, so here's the order of operation for the uh, neutral. If it has a strength of 14, it's going to swarm. If not, it'll go into overheating, which it will forage right there. Okay, its strength is five. Okay, all right, I'm fine with this. So, in that case, hmm, should I forge them? Probably a smart thing to do. I need some honey. Uh, I could it breaks down all of those, so I imagine it does. One, two, three, four. Four, four of the nine in summer have overheating. Okay. One of them in spring. And we hit the, sp did we hit the spring one? I don't no, think they we were both did. summer, yeah. And one in the fall of the nine. Mm-hmm. Okay, and then there's solo I'm not gonna bother with right now. There you go. All right, we're gonna forge over here. So disease goes up, I get... Uh, Max of two and three. Right, only two honey. I can't breed anyway, so I don't care about the pollen, I think. <laughs> I think. <laughs> yeah, that's fine, okay. I'm good. No, no, no pollen? No pollen. Okay, so we have our water covered. I don't need to worry about that. You know what? I am going to find a wilt, and did you bump down? I did, yeah. Okay. Uh, we are going to go ahead and forage, and looking for, oh, uh, <laughs> oh well, I have one home, or I could go, ooh, no, eh, that, hmm, no, we're going to go short-sighted, we'll go there, <clears throat> so, there. And then I, uh, it's two and three, and I will do both. Done? Cool. 
Oh, we didn't do the um, the neutral hide, but he would have just gone there. Oh, yeah, so, good, so. good call. Thank you. Uh, where's an acorn here? There we go. So, yeah. You did the actual cooling action. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Andrew. <sighs> um, yeah, I'm a little concerned about the cleanliness. So I'm going to clean. So this goes back and stands up. And the clean. Hmm. It's for each, you can, yeah, for each one is one, and then you stand it up. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You got it. All right. Uh, so now the neutral will go. So the acorn. So here we go. It's not at 14. Cannot reach any uh, water ones. The hive closest to the wild hive, up to three spaces away, that it hasn't raided, which is Jess's. It will look at this. If the target hive is a player hive, if it's strength number of unassigned workers plus defenders. So how many unassigned in defenders? Three total, Jess? Three. Mm -hmm. Okay. If the target's hive strength is no more than two higher, it is three. So here we go. Then the wild hive strength, then the wild hive will raid the target hive. So. Place a neutral worker token on the map tile occupied by the target hive, then carry out the raid. Now we flip it over to this side. All right, so here we go, our first one. The wild hive will raid. Choose the target. We've done so. Who is the target? It's a player hive. The attacker rolls a d6. And the raid strength is minimum of d6 raiding. Hold on, let me run through this. Uh, Raiding wild hives. Here we go. This is the first time this has happened with us. So, but isn't the wild hive raiding me? Yes, exactly. Yeah. So the wild hive raids, raiding a player hive. Okay. When a wild hive raids a player hive, roll the d6. The rolled result is how much honey the wild hive will steal from the player's hive. However, the wild hive can never steal more honey than its own strength value, meaning max of five in this case. The stolen honey is simply removed from the player hive and returned to the general supply. The defender, whose hive is being raided, may prevent the wild hive from stealing honey. For each worker bee that the defender has currently assigned to the defend action, the amount of honey stolen is reduced by one. This does not reduce the strength of the wild hive, however. And then the defender may further prevent the wild hive from stealing honey by sacrificing worker bees from among those assigned to the defend action or unassigned. For each defending bee that is sacrificed, the strength is reduced by two, uh, which also reduces the or the amount of honey by two that can be stolen. For each unassigned worker bee that is sacrificed, the wild hive strength is reduced by one. So two for sacrificing here, one sacrificing from there. And if the wild hive steals at least one honey from the player, then the wild hive strength is increased by one. If the wild hive strength is reduced to zero, then a wild hive is removed and the defender scores two points. Okay. There you go. So, so it's actually really simple. So roll the d6. Someone attacking me. I'm okay. I'm the defender. <laughs> okay. Three. So three honey. And you could sacrifice if you wish to. Nope. Okay. I don't know. I didn't. That was a lot of words. But you can tell me what the steps are. So what's now? <laughs> so you could decide to to sacrifice all three of those, right? Each. Any number that you wish, and we'll reduce this. So I'm giving up bees for honey, for honey yeah. which is probably a bad trade-off. Yeah, right. that makes no sense. Okay, so you gave up three honey, and he succeeded. So goes up one. There we go. Okay. Okay. There we go. All right. So do you have to give up bees if you can't pay the honey? I think they wouldn't attack if you didn't have any honey. They you can only... cannot attack if you have no honey. Yeah. No, I'm saying if you didn't have enough. They'll take what they can get. Yeah, they won't take more. Like, they and only will take a so bit more. So why would you not... ever sacrifice bees? That doesn't make because sense. Because if that can drop that to zero, you'll score points. Yeah, I think if, if they're weaker, then you can get points out of it. There but... you go. So I would have dropped them if I... Yeah, for each, uh, what is it? Sacrificed? Um... So not only For each does it be sacrificed, decrease the raid strength and the wild hive strength yeah, by one. Yeah, so the strength would go down by one for each bee you sacrifice. Okay. And so you couldn't have defeated if you them. Defend. Right. Yeah. 
Whereas if they were here and you sacrificed, it would go down two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. That makes sense. Sure. Okay. Good. Okay. Okay. It's so a lot of words. I understand. That's but. good to know because knowing that was coming out, I should have put some defense over there. Cold my house. But they either. cannot attack you again because right. they've already done. No, service. I meant earlier. Understood. Yeah. Just letting you know. Yeah. Okay. We're gonna go ahead and forage again. So we're gonna go ahead and come out here. So that's gonna be two honey. Mm -hmm. And two, four, six, seven, eleven. Mm -hmm. I'm at seven, that's probably bad. Half, I would lose five. Put me at six. Mm. If I win, no, it's a max of three. So done. That's it. Taking no pollen. That's it. And that will go up. I forged three times, didn't I? Yes. One, two, three. Okay. Uh, I may have created a monster. <laughs> so, he's going to attack me next. Three and three, please. Mm. Uh, three and three? Yeah. Oh, it's well, two, honey, because of this thing. Oh, two and three. Yeah. Um, okay. So it's not going, okay, so it's going to attack me if its strength is greater, two, if my strength is within two of it, essentially. Okay, go through it again. <laughs> if it's no more than two higher, mm -hmm. they will attack you. Which okay. they're going to attack you if, yeah. Right, so I'm wondering if, so I can put two here, but that then that counts as three because of my queen. Um, so how does that affect its what does it see me as of now in terms of defense? Is it still... Unassigned workers plus number of workers assigned to defend. But the defend just helps you for sacrificing. Okay. That's what it does. So it would still attack me at this it's point. Still go it's, it's even going if I did to all attack, these, Yeah, it's still, still going to attack you. Okay. Um, but if I do that, a four... I'll Love an pollinator. I like that. Hmm. Okay. I could sacrifice. Ugh, God. Mm. It feels bad to do that, but I might have to just to not. Well, I think maybe it I kills the hive. Uh, well, only if I kill them all, which I don't want to lose all my bees, especially since I'm not making new bees next round. Um, I could just go fight him. And reduce his strength that way. But then he's going to come fight me, and I'm not going to have much to defend with. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is irritating. <laughs> mm. Um... Or you can just let four. it steal honey. Could do that too. Um, yeah, I'm just debating right now if it makes more sense to just fight him right now or defend and let him come to me. Uh, probably makes more sense just to go fight him. Oh, this is tough. Pour All some right. pollen on B. I'm not going to think of this anymore. I'm just going to defend with all of them. <laughs> okay, so now he's going to come and attack you because you're within three. Yes. So we put another acorn. It's five per hive, by the way, maximum mm -hmm. that they can do. Looking for an acorn. You know what? It doesn't matter because there's only one hive out there, so we're just going to go ahead and put that there. It's right there. Go for it. I got it. All right. So here we go. Roll a d6 for or I, I prefer you roll your own death. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. Okay. Five. So five. So he's going to take all your honey unless you wish to prevent it. Okay. If you prevent it, 
if you sacrifice, it's going to reduce the n number of honey by two for each one well, that you sacrifice. But the rate strength is also decreased by just having the finny bees anyway, right? Yeah. So, um, so there's like there's three bees defending, plus there's a bonus of one from here, right? I think mm -hmm. so. There's four de defense. Each two gives you one. Each two gives me one. So is I, that rounded up or rounded down? I think so it's rounded down. On. This is three reduced from that. So he's going to steal two plus as one. of right now. Plus the plus queen. one. Yeah. And it doesn't say. And obviously Matt's a little busy at, at uh, Gen Con. So um, for every two. And it doesn't say what way around, so we're going to assume not in your favor. Right. Sure. So that is going to be a total of, so it goes from five to one. Four, three, two, one. One. Call it one. Yeah. So they're going to steal one honey. Only one. If they, it doesn't reduce the strength of the hive, however. And if he right. steals any honey from you, it goes up again. going up. Yeah. So he is going to get stronger, but you'll have enough to feed your hive. Yeah, I mean, that's my main concern right now. And I feel like I, losing bees at this point is going to be bad news. Right. So I think I'm fine with him just taking one. Okay, so there and Seems legit. there. I mean, I want him gone too, but... Yeah, now it's not the time. <laughs> nope. Okay, so back to me. Hmm. I think... Not worried about that. Oh, I have not cooled. I will go, uh, there are seven. So there and done. So are you guys able to follow along? Is it making sense? Are you enjoying the game? I'm curious for those watching. Jess? Yeah, I'm looking, sorry. I no, was trying fine. to figure something out. Um, Man, killing things gonna Ooh, suck. That's not good. <laughs> All right, cleaning's not a good idea because I might leave this hive, and then it's nice and clean. Mm. I don't really think I want to build. I don't want to raid. So. What am I doing with these guys? Scout, I guess. Hope I get a thing you guys can't get to. Oh, but I might leave. If I leave, I switch with that one. No, you would switch with whatever you swarm to. Yeah, the one you make. Your new one that you make. Okay. Those aren't what I... Those are not what I wanted. <laughs> Darn you. Is there anything better than another? I guess that one. Okay. Do this one. It's a lot of rules, but here. It's really not that bad. Mm, the flow chart here. helps. And once you play it once or twice, you're going to be fine. Yeah, it flows pretty well. And step back, and I go. Oh, I think and knowing how much stuff to take is a real challenge. Yeah, that. Oh, that's <laughs> that absolutely is. Um, but I would ar make that argument that it's it's that way for just most math, but it hurts. Yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, you're done. You're out of workers. I'm out of workers. Jess, do it again. Uh, sorry, he goes again because there's still. Actions to be had, so neutral worker on the wilt tile will be the next one, because can't attack either of you, can't reach me. Both of those have been uh, foraged, so it goes to a wilt tile. Within three, is there one? This one? Yeah. Or no, that's, no, it's uh, been, that's I, already I, been foraged. It's been foraged. So, so there no. is no wilt tile within three, so we keep going. Uh, bloom tile is next, so it'll go there. Okay. And there we go, Jess. Take your action. Mm. Mm. Um. It doesn't hurt. It stings. Uh, well done, craft dragon. Is he gonna? He's not gonna go again, or 
Because no. he doesn't take a the, uh, This is his your last action, so he's done. Yeah. Um, so actually, here, let's save some time and start clearing. Sure. Well, wait, she might forage, so we can't. I don't want to do anything, so pass. Okay. <laughs> All right, so clean up. Yeah. You could clean. It's better than nothing. No, I I mean, I suppose, but I'm going to move. I'm going to swarm and move, so it doesn't matter. Oh, okay. This is going to go to zero. Got That's it. That's why it doesn't benefit right. me to do that. Pass the first player. Get your workers back. And half mites for the hygienic. Move back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what happens if you switch queens and flip sides? You just put it on what? I think you put it on the equivalent uh, space in the same because they're like no. If you oh, if you no, if you stay. No, no, I'm saying requeen because you can requeen for a B, and you flip it. Like, how are you going to know what the equivalent is? Do you just count? It's weird. I don't know. Yeah, that would be that. That's exactly what I would think. Yeah, yeah. We haven't had that. We haven't done that yet. So. But it's hard. I don't know what the equivalent would be. Yeah. Because there's three times as many on this side. Interesting. Okay. And I'm here. I think. I don't yep. Know where that you was. were. Okay. Okay. Um. So right. All egg right. Phase. So egg phase. Oh, One, two, three, four, five. Grab your babies, uh, if you can. I mean. I'm making eggs, but they ain't doing anything. Right. <laughs> All right. We go into the feeding phase. One honey per two. Mm -hmm. One, two, three, One, two, four. Three. That'll be all four. All right. And then uh, after the feeding phase, we go into the brood phase. The brood phase, they hatch. It's one per pollen, so one of these guys doesn't hatch. And I lose none, so all four come out. And I get two extra, because every two gives me one. And starting with Jess, are you swarming? Yes. Okay, so go ahead and swarm. So remove half your workers, round down. Seven. All right, and half your honey, which is none, right? Yep. Choose a wild hive. Sunflower. Sure. Okay. Or dandelion, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And within three, place it. And its strength that was seven. You said. Yeah. <laughs> These guys are not nice. <laughs> within three of me. Yep. Yeah, I figured that was coming. <clears throat> Glory to Rome for that. <laughs> Well, it wasn't at you. Andrew's the one who started it. <laughs> All right. So then uh, we set the strength now. Should I stay or should I go? Go. Okay, right, you're going to swap. Mm -hmm. So if you go, you must keep the same queen. Just yeah. turn her inactive. You get a skip feeding token. And because you moved, you downsize, right? So you get. So that's. I thought I had a choice. What do you mean? I have to do the one I place? Correct. That's what we yeah. Oh, we, we I thought you that. could choose this one or that one. No, no it's the one you put down that you switch with. Yeah. Mm. So Why would you, I want to be next to you? You could go somewhere else if you want. Yeah, if you want to redo that. Like, yeah. why would you glory to roam that? Why would I want to be over well, there? That's bad, but that's not bad. Mm. Why? Because I don't want it within three of me to come attack me. <laughs> but it's within three of all of us. Well. Could have put it there. And it would be <laughs> that wasn't going to happen. <laughs> I know it's unlikely, but I'm, there you go. So I. But then I would switch with that. I don't know that you're going to switch. Yes, I realize you projected it, but no, I'm going to or switch. Telegraphed it. Okay. Glory to drone. Where oh, do I, like I want to be? I don't really want to be next to you guys. So how do I get away from that? Yeah, uh, you kind of have to be next to something bad. <laughs> right. So either I'm stuck next to him, he's going to attack me every single time. 
Ugh, I guess I do that. Ugh, all right. At least that way the acorn one isn't coming after you. So. Yeah. All right, reset your hive. Get rid of your water. Mm -hmm. Reset it to 10 size. You didn't sacrifice any honey, so it doesn't increase. And now you score uh, three points. Yep. And, and this goes to yep. not a... Correct, because new home. Mm -hmm. new, new hive smell. Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, you're not swarming, I assume? Nope. All right, I believe I am. So three, six, nine, ten, eleven. I'm at seven. That would be a yes. So here we go. So I remove half of mine. So that's going to be five. Rounded down. Yep. So that's going to be five. Um, we'll go ahead and do the spider web. Okay. Uh, where is the spider web? Oh, we got it. So let's. Eh, hold on. It's, it's really where do you want to be? Because that's <laughs> no. ending up. Oh, unless uh, you're not moving. Yeah. Huh. Hmm. Put it there. I'm good with that. All right. Uh, so it's going to be a strength of five, and I'm going to stay. So pause. And. I didn't get rid of any honey, so just a straight three points for yellow. Okay. Uh, and did you reduce yours due to mites? You, how many babies you had? Peanut Gallery's asking when you had babies. I don't think you did. Oh, that sucks because that changed my. Sw Thing. No, it just minus it one. Did, isn't it did. It changed the seven because I wouldn't have had fourteen. You would have had twelve. Yeah. Right. So that would be six. six. So the power yeah. there is six, yeah. and yeah. I have oh, six one, yeah. left. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Good call. Good catch, uh, Marcus. Okay. So that's it for the breed. Uh, the brood. Sorry. Event. Go. Uh, okay. What do we got? Uh, unseasonably cool. All hey, right. that seems all right. That actually seems like a positive one. <laughs> Unseasonably cool. Bloom tiles are plus one honey and plus one pollen. All right, nice. Ooh. All right, so it's two and two. There we go. And we passed it. Yep, so Jess, begin. Oh. Those tiles are plus one. Man, this is like a weird game of chicken else. now. Because <laughs> they're not going to come fight us unless we have honey. <laughs> 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 That's true. <laughs> That's true. Oh, yeah. How, so how does this work? They're going to fight. They'll fight each other. They will go. They, there will be hive on high violence. Yeah. So if we, we wait seen that yet to either. get <laughs> honey. This is going to be bizarre. But they're going to go to, what do they attack first? Um, the first thing they will do, nobody's The best at ones. The wilt they tiles. Will, no, no, they will go to water. Oh. Uh, oh, but no, there's no overheating. No overheating. Yeah. I apologize. So it will be hive on high violence. Yeah, raids first after overheating. So... They would, and if we don't have any honey, they'll go after each other, for sure. Oh, game on! Actually, yeah, Wait, so where do they forage first? Because it says forage wilt tiles. Yeah, after the ra so they'll rage wilt, the forage wilt and bloom and harvest in that order. But first, they'll raid if they can raid. You know, I didn't. I've never even realized that that's on there, but it's clearly on there. Okay, so raid closest hive is going to happen first. Yeah. But then they are going to take over those tiles, which is. That's the ones yes. we need. Right, but we have some time while they're fighting each other to get those tiles. That's awesome. <laughs> what? Okay, and they they always raid the closest ones. So they so these guys first are definitely player will each dictate. Other. Oh, this is so weird. Okay. So I don't understand this. So <laughs> they, I don't need can to I explain it. Yes, please. Okay. What is happening? <laughs> Do you have honey? No. They cannot attack you. So what should they, I do? Probably not get honey yet. Well, the thing is, though, they also will only raid the closest hive. So <laughs> you're two away from this guy, and he's one away from me and this, so he'll go after these That's two first. That's what I first. don't understand. He, okay, you are the first player marker. Yes. You're going to choose the order in which these guys activate. Right. Okay. Okay, so let's say you choose this one to activate. Yes. The first thing he's going to do is attack the closest hive that has honey. That'd be that one. 
He doesn't have one. Oh, so he they just like have honey because their strength okay. is above this one. This one will then attack its closest that has honey. Which this is? one or this one you choose. Right. Okay. Then this one, if he doesn't have honey, will attack that one if possible. Or if he can attack none of them, if nobody has honey, he okay. will then go around and forge wilt tiles. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so he shouldn't forage. <laughs> I'm not saying you shouldn't. I'm just saying understand. Maybe defend. I think you could. That's the thing. I Why? think you guys are safe to forage. I don't know if I am because I'm close to the spider. You are. I, I don't. And the spider's a five. Um. Yeah, as long as one's not too strong, they'll still fight each other. Okay. Hmm. I, mm. <laughs> I'm not saying you should forage, but I'm saying I think you're relatively safe for Follow the what your gut says. I'll be right back. <clears throat> There's not really anything else to do. Um, I don't want to swarm anymore. I don't know. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> okay. I don't really know what else to do. Whatever. Okay. Um, so where are you foraging? Um, so right now the best one is a wilt tile. Yeah. So I'll do that on the wolf. So that's three and three. I might as well do that on the one I'm on. Uh, how much do you want? Uh, all of it. All right, so three and three. Okay. <sighs> I don't think I want honey because you could make the spider web one attack me. Uh. Hmm. Put scout. Oof. That's a good way to delay. <laughs> What'd you do? Foraged. Okay. Oh, and your disease goes up. Hey, Spunks. Thanks for that. Appreciate it. Thanks. Said, uh, thanks for doing under the radar games like this. Hmm. Beehives matter. <laughs> I applaud you. I don't like any of this. Um, I'll just, uh, <laughs> I'll put one in defense. <laughs> Done? Done. All right. Remember, it's plus one if you put two. I, I know. Okay. This is mostly right. delaying action. <laughs> okay. Stall, stall, That's stall. what I was like. I, mm -hmm. So I can't have babies next round, which really stinks. Oh, neither. Yeah, neither can I. Yeah. Um... Oh yeah, do you still want the pollen? Or you... Oh wait, I don't have to feed. There's a lot to think about. I shouldn't have forage. I don't need to forage. I should be doing nothing. Oh. Yeah, well now I know what I should do. Because I don't need food. So what I should have done is taken all mine and raided. I think that's what oh, I'm going to do. Done that, yeah. That's... I'm taking five. Oh. And I'm going to go after the uh, spider. Okay. So, you get two dice. <laughs> yep. Ugh. Yeah. I'm glad you know how to play this game. Because <laughs> that's what we all should have done. That'd be seven? Yeah. Yeah. Or five. That'd be five. That'll work. Uh, that'll do, pig. That'll do. So two points. Mm -hmm. And bye bye spider web. You reached twelve. You won, right? Game over. <laughs> and five honey. Or You're the only five. one who knows how to play. Right. Um. Because hmm. it's within three now. Oh boy. Yeah. Thanks, Jeff. Needed that a few minutes ago. Ah, what the hell. I'll make myself a giant, big old target. Done. 
Okay, so the neutrals go. Yep. And Jess picks which order they go in, right? Yep. So uh, pick one. Which one would you like? They're gonna fight each other because they're closest to each other. Acorn. Okay. All right. So acorn. All right. So running through that. Overheat. Not in. Raid nearest hive. It's going to be that one. Mm -hmm. So the target hive is another wild hive. Its strength is marked by the strength indicator on the wild hive board. If the target hive strength is no more than two higher, then the wild hive will raid that target hive, place a neutral worker token on it. So acorn, Jess, do you have the markers? Oh, yeah. Acorns. And here we go. Raiding a player, or uh, sorry, not a player guy? hive. On um, the. It's going on the dandelion. On the dandelion, yeah. So here we go. When a wild hive raids another wild hive, roll the d6 once for each hive, then calculate the difference, if any, in strength values between the two wild hives and add the number to the rolled result for the stronger hive. So add that. Whichever hive has the highest result wins the raid, ties go to the defender. The winner uh, has its strength increased by one, the loser has its strength reduced by one, if the loser loser has a strength reduced to zero, remove it from play. So there you go. So I'll roll for oh Jess, it's you doing it. Go ahead. Roll the dandelion. Alright, and roll acorn, the other six sided. Two. So acorn was nine to seven. So mm -hmm. up one, down one. Done. There we go. Okay. Okay. So now the dandelion uh can't. Oh, now he can't fight him because Ooh, he's too strong. Oh, interesting, right? Because he's too strong. Again, we haven't had what, violence like this. Okay. So, he can't do that. Although, he can't fight he me. He comes to me. Nope, I'm too far away. Can't come to you. No, you're not too far. You're, you're both within three. Not from Acorn. No, this Dandelion. This is Dandelion's turn, yeah. So here, if the target hive is a player hive, its strength is the number of unassigned worker. Oh, boy. Yep, he's coming for me. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay. Because Jeff picks. Correct. <laughs> do you get points from that, though? If he defends, which is going to be real hard for him to do at the moment. Roll the d6. He's going to take that much I honey I haven't from decided me. yet. He's going to take that much honey, okay? No, but I haven't decided yet. So, that's true. She could try... It doesn't try... matter whether it's me or you. Roll the die. So decide. Well, when you I decide need to first. decide yeah. first. Okay. <laughs> right. So she could defend herself and try to win right. the defense. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Once you decide, you're going to roll the d6. I okay. understand. Well, that's interesting. Okay. So they're going to take that much honey from you. Uh -huh. Or me, as it were. Nobody has any in defend. So then you can sacrifice for a minus one for it. For each one that you reduce it by one, you reduce that much honey that they take and their strength by one. Yeah, I didn't defend first. I... Or I can read next time, I guess. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, that would. The defender can prevent the wild hive from stealing honey, sacrifice workers. Yeah. Okay. And it will reduce it by one. So who's it going to attack, you or me? I guess you. Okay, roll the die. All right. Okay, and, and strength he goes up. gains one. There we go. Okay, now it's Jess's turn. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Go for it, JRX. Oh, and. Here, I'll take the ball. Ugh. So he's already attacked you. I'm good with that. <laughs> hmm. This is very weird. <laughs> Why do you put more for reading? <laughs> Uh, it improves your overall strength. So the most your strength will ever be is the number of bees you send plus the total of any dies you roll. Correct. Right. And every four bees you send, you'll get a die. If you uh, send up. four bees, you get one, or one to four, you get one die. If you send five, right, you awesome. get two dice. And then the lowest number is your two rolls combined 
or the number of bees that you send to attack. So I can't tell. Seven. Okay, so that's a seven, which is lower, five or seven? Five. five. So your attack strength is five. Okay. So then, on top of that, let me get back to the rating. So this is going to go all the way down to one. Okay. So now, if you sacrifice one of those bees, boop. Okay. So now, you reduced it from six. You're going to get up to six honey for doing so. And you get two points. And you will get two points for succeeding. There we go. It's really not that fiddly. It's really not, guys. So four, I can only take four. Um, but I only have one, two, three, four, five. I'm not. You will swarm if you take four, though, remember. Right. No, because I'm not producing things. It doesn't matter. You still have to have uh, the ability yeah. to make You'll babies. You'll swarm again. Correct. Okay. Um, but I only, even next time, I'm only going to need to feed one, two, three, four, five. You don't have to take three. any honey. I don't know. Um, I'll take three. All right, three honey it is. Mm -hmm. Here we go. All right. Okay. So, so, sir. Yeah. <laughs> so this guy, okay, so he's gone. Just dead. Yes. Um, but this guy's still going to fight me if I get any honey. If I don't get any honey, he's still going to fight me. Mm. Three, one, two. A moment, y'all. So, Andrew. Yeah. So, if you take honey, so let's see, he's going to come after you, right? Well, I don't have any honey, so he won't. Correct. Um, but you're going to lose, you're not going to feed. So right, gonna... and he has nothing else to, nobody else to attack. So, like, what I'm debating right now is do I go fight him, and how much do I fight him with? Okay, so if you, if you attack with four, right, yeah. you're only going to get one die, it's going to be the lowest number, so it's going to be one through four, Yeah. whatever that number is. All you're going to do is reduce this. You'll be able to get honey when you do that. Right. Okay, if you attack, you get honey. Right. If you defend, they take honey. Right. Okay, but if you attack, you, they can still come back to get some. Yeah. But you're going to reduce it. You're not going to be able to reduce it enough to be able to kill him, but you're going to be able to protect some of your honey. Right. Um... Yeah, so literally I'm debating if I should send two or all of them. Because the other thing is I only have one pollen, which means I'm only going to make at most one more new bee next round. I really need more bees. <laughs> That's the problem. That's, oh, and, and here we go. I mean, here's the rub. So I'm not 100% I'm not sure what the best thing to do is. Um, and I could send some bees. Because, okay, I get three pollen. Whereas, hmm. on the other hand... If you put them all into def no, you can't. Because you need honey to feed. Yeah, yeah this is the thing. <laughs> this is the thing. <laughs> all right, I think we're, we're uh, okay. We're gonna try this. We're gonna try rating with just two. So okay, this is gonna go up. I'm gonna attack him. Um, so I have this bonus. So it's a strength of three. Okay, so right. your strength is three. So you get one. Oh die. right, you do have the bonus. Right. Yeah. Um, and you're going to take my word, or our word for it, you're the one. <laughs> one. Roll better. No. So it's a strength of one. Oh my now, god. <laughs> and you can't sacrifice because it would be one, so it doesn't make sense. So that would be one. Yeah, and I could kill some bees in order to make that better. Oh, that's so annoying. <laughs> oh, that was, that was like my two ones. That was uh, So if you do so, if you sacrifice them both, that will drop to three, and then you will be able to get up to three honey. Yeah, and he'll come fight me. Correct. And I have three bees left. It's so bad. Because <laughs> I wanted to sacrifice bees on the defense, too, because that lowers his strength. Right. Um, I don't know the right answer. Well, okay, no, I have one tough. bee on defense. So if I have one honey, he can't take it from me because the defense will automatically, like, 
plus Stop two. That, right? Correct. Um, this is so dumb. <laughs> I think I have to. I can't afford to lose any beads at this point. I don't All right, think. then don't. So then here, I think this goes down and one. Take your one honey. And take one honey. Okay. Not the end of the world. <laughs> it feels like it though. It feels a little bit like it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Um, on the other hand, it's summer. We are plus one and plus one. I've already been attacked. Let's go forage. So I will. Oh, wait, it's only one. So a wilt tile within one. Where I'm at. I can't. <laughs> okay. But it's plus one. So we'll go ahead and do the bloom. Mm -hmm. So it's two and two. Okay. So the neutral will go. He will definitely fight me. Okay, so here he goes. So raiding a player hive, right? So going through this. So he's mm -hmm. going to roll... D6. Right. Great. <laughs> That's a lot of honey. I <laughs> uh, only have one honey to lose. Uh, so I think no matter what, he's just going to take it, right? Like I can't stop that from happening. Uh, okay. For oh. each one that you have to defend... And if you discard, it'll reduce it by a total of, let me run through, I apologize. So six, decrease the rage strength by the number of bees dis, uh, defended. So that's actually five, mm -hmm. okay? Does the defender sacrifice any bees? If the answer is no, then hmm. uh, he steals honey. All right, you know what, it'll be one less honey I need to feed. With, so sure, I'll sacrifice this. Okay, and so, that so this decreases the, hold on, decreases this down to three. Yep, and this goes down by two also. Yes. But that's still enough to just take this. There you go. Which he means it also goes back up. Back, back, back up. There you go. <laughs> out, out, out. No, not out. So. Yep. Okay. That was him. Mm -hmm. Yep. So I am going to... Now you can forage. Yeah, and then I'm going to get minus one for the disease. So, I think first I need to clean. <laughs> so that stands up. Okay. And, and then, now you can go. Right, he'll, and then he'll go again. Uh, he'll which forage. Will be forge a, a bloom wilt. tile here. Will it be a wilt first? I apologize, you're right. It will go there, there. closest. Yeah, not, I don't think it there matters. There we go. Um, and then I will forage. So which that lays down, lays down, and you don't get the disease. And we'll forage on the wilt. Which is so, four and four max. Uh, well, three and three. Nope. That's only bloom. You're right. <laughs> All right, so I think I need as much pollen as I can get. <laughs> so I'll do that. And I'm good. All right, and he does not take an action because he's done. Yes. yes. So these clear Thank off. God. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yep. I don't know whose idea it was to put the acorn out there, but... Uh, <laughs> oof. All right. So there. Bzz, there. And back. Okay. All right. Next, uh, so egg phase. Lay your, lay your eggs. That'll be seven. Uh, a bunch. Which it doesn't matter. I'm just going to put two. Because the rest don't matter for me. Yeah, only four are going to matter All for right. me. All uh, right. Oh, uh, bring your workers back. I apologize. Oh, yeah. One year, two. Yep. All right. So one honey per. One, two, three. One, two. So two honey feeds. And then the brood. Oh, I don't have to feed. Oh, remember that. Oh, yeah. Right. Correct. Yep. And this will go back. And now brood. Yep. So four pollen for four bees. So two pollen, two bees. And swarm. Uh, I'm good. I'm okay. at eight. Three, six, eight. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Math. No more neutrals. <laughs> It'll be three points, though, if you... There's that. True. So four and... Half rounded down, so none there. Choose a wild hive. Go and give me my uh, spider web again. All right, he's back. And you know what? Let's go. Let's dance. <laughs> Let's just, I want to, you know what? Yeah, 
Whoa. Yeah, that's fine. We'll go there. And the strength is going to four, which you already did. And, ah, I still won't have any babies. I stay there. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is frustrating. All right. So now that'll be uh, three points. Well, it's autumn now, technically, right? Because the summer, that was the last summer card. You were still in summer, though. It's the end. It's the beginning of the round. So it's the beginning that of the long turn. It starts at the beginning yeah. of the round. So I think it's only one point. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Yep. All right. So now th you're not swarming, correct? No. All right. So we go into the event phase. Flip it. Oh, wait, and you're staying where you are? Yeah, I'm not moving. Okay. I'm happy with this. So you um, have your disease, but I guess it doesn't go anywhere, right? Uh, you're right. Half is... So I guess it goes back to zero? Yep. Yeah. There we go. Okay. All right. Go ahead. Flip the event. Okay. Fall event. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> no babies. No. That one's pretty self-explanatory. Babies? <laughs> Why? <laughs> what? Wait, what's it say? Browned up? Buttoned up? Buttoned up. No brood hatches at all next month. Uh. <laughs> well, they joked in the beginning, There's we're dying. I already switched it. Yeah, there's some real colony oh, collapse going on here. <laughs> there is. Hey, this happens. Oh, this no. happens, right? Yikes. All right. Uh, all right, so the uh, actions, go for it. Oh, no. Okay. Well, I feel like I need to go fight this idiot over here because he's going to come after me, so... Bring the fight to him. Um, let's see. So every two I spend is going to give me an extra Plus strength. One. Correct. But if I only send four, I only get one die. So I should send at least five. Yeah, that's probably safer in theory. Where do you defend? Because it's two, right? No? What do you mean? Or you only not... have one honey. I... Well, I want the points, too, yeah. okay. is the thing. And, like, this thing's just going to get more and more of a pain if I don't... Because I'm the only one that can fight <clears> is at this point. Uh, that'd be seven, I'll so take five. It. So it goes down to five, or down to one. Well, I, but I have the plus one also. You're right, so, so it's six. He's it's dead. seven. Yeah, I'm so super it dead. It is seven. Good call. So, so... Six honey, max. Six honey, which sounds good to me. Especially since I can't do any... Breathing. And two points! Here we go. All right. Worked out. And my turn. Mm. Well, we're not having babies next round. <laughs> this is September. Yeah. That'll work. Let's go get him. So, one die. All right. One. Choose a good one. <laughs> Here you go. That'll be a four. That worked out. So, that's actually three. So, it drops mm -hmm. four. Okay. Two points for yellow, and I'll take four honey. Get him off the board. Gonna need a body bag. Sweep the leg, Johnny. All right. Oop, wrong one. Ah. <laughs> I feel relieved. The I don't. I have gone. nothing to attack now. I mean, you can attack us. You can. That is a thing that can happen. And how does that, does it work differently? It nope. works basically the same. Yeah. You can't, uh, you, can sacrifice, you can't sacrifice bees to just increase your strength the way you can against wild hives, but... You still do the rolling. How do you get po points from that? Uh, what is it? If you take... If you take half, at least half as much honey as you initially, your initial raiding party, then you get two points. Yep. And if you don't, if then you the defend... If you take half as much honey as your initial... So if you send, like, two bees, you and you take, take at least, at least one, one bee, one honey, then you'll get two points. But if you don't, the defender gets two points. Right. So it's a little bit of a risk. Correct. Sicko, Jeff. He's like, oh, I was rooting for Acorn. <laughs> Meanie. I already have enough honey. I don't really want to build, because then I'm just going to have more bees to feed in winter. 
There's that, but you also survive more, right? Yeah, I mean, having more I bees mean, will get more points. At the in end. winter, you're paying one honey for every three bees. If I only have like that, that would get me through winter. Uh, one. So that would be one honey, and you lose none. One honey and one honey. Correct. So. Yeah, so I don't really want to build. I don't need to clean. There's no cooling. You can't, you can't extend your, uh, grow your... Uh, I just said I don't want to build. Okay. Because then I have to... Then you can attack. Get points that way. Yeah. But like you just said, I'm probably going to end up giving points. I Not pro well, the thing is, like, you can only defend. I'm a huge target. That's the thing. He has nobody I have in nobody defense. defended. Like, it's hard for him to yeah. stop you. Stop There's people. no reason you All shouldn't right. do Where it. are the rules for that? What? How many should I put in? Because I don't know how it works. Rating works the exact same if it's a player hive. Okay, okay. so when you rate a player hive, that opponent, I'm the defender. I can prevent you. I'm trying to keep you from stealing my honey. Right. right? For each worker that I have in the defense, uh, at, and the strength of your raiding party is reduced by one. I have nobody there. Right. Okay. okay. So depending on how many you put in there, you'll roll one or two dice, depending on if it's four or five, or one to four, or five. Mm -hmm. I can then further reduce the strength of my raid party by sacrificing worker bees, one of them that's available. For each worker bee that I uh, uh, sacrifice, you... Discard a worker from your raid party, and the strength of your raid party is reduced by one. So we kind of, I get to double dip with this, but I can't stop you. I still don't see the math on it. How many should I put in? Like, so how if you is... send, uh, like, two, yes. and you only, as long as you don't roll a one... I'm going to roll a one. Okay. So how many if you roll I a one, <laughs> then you want to send three right, because then you'll that. be able to re-roll at least once. Yeah, because If I you want to be able to re-roll so twice, you should send four. All right, so... So okay. it's like each time you want to re-roll, you got to lose a B. So it's how much you want to mitigate the risk. Okay. There you go. All right, so it's three. I could sacrifice that to basically reduce that by one and your total by... But it, it, it's a two, so okay. I'm not going to bother. I hope you choke on it. I don't want the honey, though, oh. and I can't take it. I don't think she has to take it. No. May. Yeah. But you do but get two points. she gets two points. There you go. And can I take it and discard it? No. No, Once you, you can take never, something, yeah, you can't. So you have to have the room for it? Yeah. Okay. You can never take more honey cubes from them than, you, than I have in my comb. Um, I mean, you could build with it. Is a thing, and, then and you disease, and you gain disease for that. I gain disease. Yep. Yes. Um. Okay. Um, what is it? There you go. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So this is available online. Actually, one of the I think one of the backers uh, by the name of Susan I think made this. Mark. Hmm. All right. Yeah. There's no neutral hive, so this should go pretty quick, I think. I mean, I hate, to, point. I hate to beat up on you, Edward, but I feel like... Points. <laughs> why points. not? Points. Uh, so I'm going to raid you with these two. Uh, oh, by the way, I want and to And you three. have... Uh, hoo, hoo, hoo. Right, yeah, you could. Yep, go for it. Oh, uh, but then... Hmm, if I roll a one, I'm in bad shape. But you'd have to lose a B to prevent me from taking the one. So yeah, that's fine. All right, we'll send a two. Okay. Um, so it's technically strength three because of my queen. That's a three. Yep. Okay. So. Go yep. ahead. <laughs> okay. So two honey, which I'll just take. And uh, two points. Okay. Oh, and my disease goes up. Now y'all can't attack me anymore, at least. <laughs> So, I will go forage, and foraging, no babies, remember that. So, we are still, no, we are in fall. Yes. So, harvest tile. That'll be three and three. 
wrong thing. It's done. And And done. There we go. All right. So you, do you get a defense too? Uh, no, I don't have anyone in defense. No, so. like for your thing. Oh, I could still, it. no, it no, has to be. because it's got to be a minimum of two. Yeah. Right. It's just a bonus if I have two here. At least for each two I have in defense. As long as you bonus. don't roll a one. Yeah. Because <laughs> right. points, right? Because points. Go for it, roll. It's going to be a one. Nope. Nope. All right, you can have it. I don't want them. You don't want them, right? Just the two points. <laughs> and go for it. Hmm. Um, well, literally, no one can defend. I've already raided you, so I may as well go raid Jess. <laughs> I thought you couldn't. You just said you couldn't be attacked because you were... What do you, you mean? You guys have both, a, he's attacking uh, you. You can't attack me. the same hive twice. Oh, I thought you were saying because you were using your last worker. I misunderstood that. So one goes, that's a, yeah. It so doesn't one, matter, so it's right. one. So I'll take. It just can't defend. One. Yeah, oh, that's gross. And two <laughs> points, four, mm -hmm. there. All right. And my disease goes up. There you go. Bring your workers better. back. Going. Oof. Eggs, they're not going to hatch. Oh, there. Eggs, they're not going to hatch. Feed, uh, one for every two. So, four. Jess? I, I, okay, one, two, three. Brood doesn't matter, so we're going to the swarm. I'm safe. Um, oh, so I had one. We should all be safe because none of us yeah. right. did any breeding. Mm -hmm. So three, six, eight, right? You're yep. good? Yep. Okay. So event phase, flip it. Okay. This turns. Uh, so coming. that's there, right? No, because this is only second. So we're in October. Okay. Calling of the drones. What is it? Calling of the drones. Calling of the drones says next month each honey is enough to feed three workers oh. instead of two. Nice. Oh. Okay. okay. And everybody turn your queens back on. Yes. Queens are on. Okay. Oh, so I'm only going to have to feed one, three, six. Hmm. Mm. <laughs> you know what? Done. It's probably Come smart. on. <laughs> probably smart. You have so many bees. I do. I guess, yeah, the question is how many to put there. I'll just follow what you're doing. So if you do that, your what? raid party strength is going to be reduced by three. Right. Because I'm defending if you try and come after me. No, she's defending too. Defend. I yeah. apologize. I'm sorry. I yeah. just saw the wrong thing. Okay. No. Come on. She's correctly worried about me. Yep. <laughs> um, okay. But should I put them all in there? Because I don't understand. Okay. When math. you defend, yes. it reduces whatever he attacks with by three or whatever that number is. Mm-hmm. Okay, and then if you d sacrifice any bees, every bee sacrificed decreases the raid strength another one by every one that's sacrificed. I mean, I'm not going to be able to attack with only two, really. So should I just defend with all of them? Well, you could get more resources if you want more. I exactly. don't need any. You're gonna use one more honey, right? Because you have no. Five. It's one. Oh wait, it's one for three. three. That's right. So yeah. So I don't need to do good. anything this round. Yeah. So up to you. It's not a need. It's a want to to be able nope. to get more points. Points? What points? At the end of winter. 
every if you bee have stuff, you get honey points. you have at the end. Yeah, but I mean, look where I am, no. Okay, all right. So go ahead, Andrew. Okay, well, tacking doesn't seem so attractive anymore. Um, we're gonna clean, because I don't like being at minus one. So that's it. It's all you. That's fair, okay. Um, so forage, so this goes back. We're gonna forage over here. So three honey and three pollen. Uh, do I want, hmm. I feel like I've played terribly. Oh, I don't think any of us have played great, honestly, but. Uh, I want, I'm going up to nine. One, two, I'd have to jump up so much to do that. Oh my God. Um, hmm. We'll get one pollen for right now. Okay, next action. So that's, yep, yeah, so that's that. Um, okay. So I another three and three. Sure, okay, we'll forge again here. Uh, so that goes up. Get. And what kind of tile is it? It's, it's a harvest, harvest so tile. Three three. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So three honey and I can spend all of those, but then I need three honey still. Hmm. So I'm thinking through like how can I make the most bees right now without swarming next round? Because I feel like swarming at this point is not worth it. I want to increase the size of my hive. Ideally enough to be able to put 10 bees out, but that requires jumping up four, mm. which is a lot. Yeah. It should be all four of these. And eight honey. And that yeah, and eight honey. could do it. I could do it, and then I'd be left with two honey, which Especially, I, yeah, so I'd still need one more honey. Yeah. Or you would only lose one bee. Um. Yeah, I'd only lose... Two bees. Bye. You'd lose two bees. Because one honey each feeds three. Yeah. And you have eight. Right. I don't, I don't want to... I, I think I, I want to feel it feed them. Um, I, have the, I could have the one more bee to feed. And then I could hatch two more. And one would die of disease. So I think I only want two pollen. I think that is the right number. Because then All I'll right. hatch three and one will die of disease. Next action. Okay, four of these guys are gonna go build. So that's eight? That's eight. So this jumps up one, two, three, four. Okay. Then, last one is going to forage. It's gotta be close. It's gotta to be you. close. Which um, is a water or a wilt? Yeah. Which so it's one, or one, one, and one, one and one doesn't matter. So I don't want the water. So we'll do the wilt. Makes so sense. I get a yep. honey, and I don't want the pollen. Okay, done. Good. Oh, and this right. goes up. Pass first player. There. Take your workers back. And I'm the only one that goes back. There we go. Babies. So, babies. Everybody, finally, <laughs> we get to have some. So I get, eh, for all intents and purposes, I'm only putting three out. One, two, three. Yeah, I'm only really putting three out and one's going to die. So. Right. Then feed, remember it's one per three yep. now. So three. So oh, one honey. I'm still in there. Okay, so I fed three. Now there's one. No, okay, and now we're going into the brood. Mm -hmm. which, oh, that's that first. There okay. you go. Two, three. These come out. This one yeah. dies. Okay. And swarm. And swarm. I am safe from swarming. I am swarming. We're, we're, you're swarming? Oh, yeah. And I paid one, so I actually got... I forgot this thing does another. But yes, I'm swarming. Okay. I okay. stop it. <laughs> okay. So how many... Uh, reduce half. Uh, half so your four. bees. Put out the dandelion. dandelion. Yep. You go. Mm. So that'll go to four. Yep. Remove half your honey, which is none. Choose where it's going. And it's going to be within three of all of us. Um, but a strength of four really is no big deal. Yeah, that's a thing. 
And she'll have the first opportunity to fight it. She will, but or she but may would be, try and defend. Yeah. Huh. Interesting. And I have to move to this thing or not move to it, right? But I might as well move to it because at least then I don't have to feed. I don't have any. Yeah, in this that's a fair point. Yeah, I that's have a fair nothing point. to lose, so I don't know why I wouldn't move. That is a fair statement. That's true, yeah, because you're already at 10 calm. Yep. <clears throat> I guess the only reason you wouldn't is if you want to change queens, but. Correct. But I'm that not queen seems breed. okay right now. I'm right. not going to breed anyway right. because Correct. I'm moving. So. Right. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, I mean, the defense would be cool, but it's not feeding would be better, I think. Yeah, not feeding would be really nice. Um, all right, so if I'm going to move away from you. Oh, where do I need to be near? You might as well keep that side up because we're in fall. Yeah, we're in fall. Um, so all right, take care, Harvey. This. So one, two, three. I can't get to any of those besides this one. I don't really go there. All right, so no feed. You are moving, so swap them and reset your hive there yep. and there. There you go. Yep. And you get one point. Right. Uh, event. The final event. Final event. So these are gone. Uh, Cooler temps. All right, so Cooler Temp says one third of your workers rounded down must remain in the hive this month. Move them to the defend action space. So one third rounded down. Uh -oh. So I have six, so two of them are coming here. Weird, okay. One goes to defend. Yep, there you go. Huh. All right, Jerex, you're up. Final round. Okay, so I don't have to feed, but I'm gonna need some stuff for winter. Okay. I'm not going to make babies, so I know how many workers I have. Actually, since this is the last round, nobody's feeding. What? Yeah, because feeding happens at the beginning of the round. Yeah. So, but we are going to have to feed over the winter. Yes, so. there is that, right. Yeah, you're going to want enough food to feed your bees. So it's three round, yeah. Like, I mean, there's also disease, but... but but like okay. you, I, she forages twice. It does, she's fine. Yeah, right. You want at least four for honey, four honey. If I fine. can get to that thing, because I'm here, and you guys are gonna. There's one. Yeah. Yeah, that's three and three. So, no, but that's three hundred. No, I know, but also points, right? So oh yeah, right. You I could might want to go fight, but I only have three workers. You could you can sacrifice workers to increase your strength, but well, then so I have to forge twice, right? Then you're not fighting. Well, you get honey from fighting. Ew. If you kill them, that's four honey. But I need. But you would be down six. to three bees. Yeah, you probably oh. have to lose at least one bee. At least. So I'll only need three honey. True. Right. You. Would that's risky. Huh? Because if you roll poorly, I kill a bee. If you roll at least, you have to roll at least a three. Sure. All right. It's not really supposed to be this long of a game. All right. So, stuff. raid. Okay. All right. Roll. There you go. And two. So your strength is two. So it'll we'll go so, down two. No, so if you kill it. two bees, you'll kill it and get two points. However, how, how much honey do I get? You'll get four honey. You'll get, right. You're getting two honey right now. Okay, so if you kill all the way, you'll get four honey. If you do that, though, you're down below three bees. What's that? So? You're rounded down, right? Yeah. Yeah, I guess you you can survive that way. Yeah. You're right. Four. So two points. two points and four honey. She I got, got the it. honey. You got it. Okay. Interesting. Nah, wow. Yeah. Okay. Andrew. Uh, okay. Well, I was going to go fight him, but no, that's not an option. Um, everyone's well defended, and I need food. <laughs> so, we're just going to go forage. Oh, but... Mm. No, it's fine. We'll go forage. We're going to go here. So that's uh, three honey, and the pollen doesn't matter anymore. So, that's good. And mm. this goes up one. One, and that's going to be uh, three and three, right? On the harvest? Mm hmm. 
one, two, three, and no pollen. Done. Jess, done. Andrew. Yep. Um, so all the harvest, oh, that's two away. And Wilt gets one honey, that sucks. Bloom mm. gives two. Two's not bad. So I need to get, I want to get at least 10. Get two and two. Or sorry, no, that'd be two. All right, be two on my high. And then, all right, well, whatever. Regardless, I should go, well. Oh, you have the good one next year. All right, I'm gonna clean, because I'm also worried about this. So that stands up. And... Yeah, I think so. Yeah, we spent a long time in the beginning just finding, getting the rules straight in our heads. Oh, that's a, <laughs> that's a real, that's a good move. <laughs> oh. Oh, okay, Done. great. Um, all right, time to rethink math. Uh, so that could be two. This could be two. Well, not only that, guys, but the other big thing is this game needs a play rate. Five and seven. We'll really does. Nine. If you could just we'll, see that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about it when we get to the round table. Because I actually really like the game. It's just... Suffering from that, oh, okay. and us not having a, a lot of plays under our belt. You so. have two. Hmm. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're doing it. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, Edward, we're coming after you. <laughs> I thought you might. I was worried about so that. This gets it down. All right, so I have the defender. Okay, so how many are you coming after me with? Five. Okay, so two dice. Go ahead, roll them out here. Okay. So it's five. going to be five. Decrease the raid party strength by the number of D bees defending two, so it's actually just three, so right. we'll get rid of that. Okay. So then I could sacrifice any bees assigned to defend if I do. I discard a worker from uh, his raid party and decrease the raid strength by one. Mm. And that might help you in the winter if you have less bees. So if I discard two, I would lose one and one be down to one B. Well, you still the four out there. Right, that's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah, so, you're okay. So there, re reduce that, and that's so now down to two, guy. and that goes down to two. Uh, yep. Don't defense reduce double or something? Or, no, that's okay. only against the neutrals. Okay. Two, you said? Yep. Okay. Discard a worker from the raid party and decrease the raid for each B sacrifice. So that's two. Okay. One more. Yeah, One. down two. Yeah. Choke on it. All right. But you get two points. I tried. I, I don't because my original raid party size was five, and I needed and you to get didn't take enough. Yeah. Oh, so that means. Yeah. I got two points. Yeah, that was actually terrible for me. <laughs> now I don't wait. Oh. Have I don't have enough honey at all. <laughs> I'm so dead. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so we get to see it. Here we go. Well, yes. This so, is a good example. All right. So wow. cleanup phase is take your stuff back. We're, we're not going to bother. So here we go. Yes. Now we go into winter upkeep. So, well, you want to see times. how many you have. Uh, All right, yeah, bring your Take bring your bees your back, back so you can see it. You know, oh, maybe I should have. Eh, but it's too late now. I probably should have sacrificed a bee to, like, re roll a die at that point, but whatever. Yes, these are the things. Uh, <laughs> fair point to get it to a four, two. Still wouldn't have mattered. No, you wouldn't have made it wouldn't to Wouldn't have half. mattered. But uh, I would have had one less bee defeat. <laughs> that is <laughs> that. Now, we have to do this three times. We'll do this in turn order. So, feed your bees. One third the number of worker bees rounded down. How many bees do you have, Jess? Two. One Two. third rounded down is zero and zero. Do that three times. She's done. Andrew. Oh, I'm super dead. Is uh, gonna, okay. That's three, honey. Okay. And I lose a bee. Because of the mites. Yes. So then he feeds yep. one third. If you don't have enough, 
And any remaining worker bees starve. Mm -hmm. yeah, there, there's one. and one more. So. <laughs> and now, and one now third I'm... rounded down, zero. But you and you lose one. I turn it down. Yeah, oh. round it down. Okay. And then you lose one to the mite for the third one. <laughs> I Survive. <managed> to <laughs> you made it. And now, for me, that was one so third bad. Good thing you didn't it, down. it was so bad. There, and then zero. One third rounded down. And uh, one third rounded down. down. There we go. So we go into final Ooh. victory points. One point for every remaining honey. And one for oh, every bee. Oh my goodness. So Jess gets six to 25. I feel like we completely bork this, but one? Yeah. And I get uh, five, nine. Nine. To uh, 20. Yep. There we go. Wow. Terrible teacher. Jess at, 20, at 26, 25, 17. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> All right, so I like this game. Yeah, I do, but it absolutely needs a player aid because the player aid that it has, this, and it shows the victory points on the back. I think we made the game harder than it needed to be because we're not super fluid with the game. But yeah. overall, I like the theme of the game. I think the component quality is good. And I think the game actually flows pretty well, or at least I see that it could, mm -hmm. is how I see it. Mm -hmm. That's my thoughts. Go for it. Chime in. Feel free. Uh, I think you're right. I think uh, the rating is definitely the most like convoluted part of it. And it's yes. not actually even that... It, I feel like once you get it down, it won't be that bad. But especially when you're doing it like wild on wild or wild on person and person. I'm like, because there's like four different instances of some like one fighting another... It can get a little bit confused in your head about what what keeping it all straight. What corresponds yes. to what yes. thing, and yes. when can you sacrifice to be for what effect, and right. that stuff like that can be a little bit wonky. And here, I think for some the people, the chart is nice in theory, but it's still. No, I mean, the flow chart's great. The thing is, though, that there's a lot of if this, then that, then this, if this, then that. Yeah, that's fine. And when you read through it, or you're doing one scenario completely simple because you're going through and you make it to the end. The problem is that it's exceedingly variable. So when you're looking at this, do you want to zoom in on that? Mm. So when you're looking at this, there, you're coming down and it branches off something. Mm. There you go. It branches off like three to the side, up, down, right. So my recommendation would just be if you're going to play this with new players, once you've played this once or two, once or twice, you're going to get to understand that, but with new players, I'd just literally run through some raids, yeah. teach the game, and then say, and we're going to fight. Yeah. And then run through scenarios of each one of those mm -hmm. with defense so that they can roll and see. And once everybody's on the same page of how raiding in defense is going to go, then I think that kind of levels the field, and then you can make those informed decisions. Right. And the other thing. You don't thing, know what the value of defending is no. until you see Correct. that. Correct. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no. And, and we haven't played the game enough to yeah. be able to have done that. So I think what would happen probably down the road is we play another playthrough of this and do exactly that. Mm. And yeah. hopefully there's a there's a player aid out by then that, yeah. that Matt comes up with. I think will absolutely help streamline and cut this literally the playtime in half. Yeah. I, I really, I mean, just to counter that, I don't. I think that player aid for the fighting is good. I'm not sure it could be streamlined more. Maybe it can. I know he's received that feedback about the player aid. That's right. why he yeah, came right. up with this. Sure. So I'm not sure it can be streamlined more. I really think, personally, that it's more experience in going through each of those scenarios so that you can grok it in your head and say, okay, I get it, and you've had more experience than us right. with this sure. game. Yeah. So you were like, no, 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 it's so, you just, and you're right. It's just yeah. not we, having gone through each of those we got scenarios. It by the end. Yeah. Sure, yeah, 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 yeah. I got you. And um, correction, Susan, one of the backers, made this, and then Matt oh, okay. posted gotcha. it. Yes. So that's it. Okay. So, so I don't think go. it's that. I think it's just experience with it. So when teaching, making sure, and the thing is, we did run through some raids. It's just that it's so variable, not all of them, and not all the different ways right. to defend and how to do that. Yeah. And it was the nuance that we weren't familiar with. Yeah. Um, in the game. So it was more that that I struggled with in, in this. And the other thing I did struggle with, I would just point out, 
Cleaning bees is really important, especially right before you're going to do something yes. that pushes up your disease. Yes. And that's going to be also a familiarity thing. So I would say to new players, make sure that if you are taking an action that has that disease plus one on it, if you have enough workers, clean first. The other option on that counterpoint is when you swarm, if you move hives, go to the hygienic queen. And right. then and then that, that takes care because yeah. that takes care of it for you essentially, right? Like I didn't change queen once the entire game and I never had a problem whatsoever yeah. with with the mites. And well, so I made lots of mistakes in not cleaning my bees enough and yet I was able to mitigate it by changing hives and going back to zero. So there's still, there's that, it's right, not exactly. necessarily yeah, yeah, yeah. a one way. Oh, you don't 100%. have to have the hygienic yeah. queen. I did fine with it. I just regretted that I kept forgetting to t make that clean B move before I did a raid or forage. So I was just trying to point that out for people right. is remember that. Mm -hmm. So Omer asks for BT Harvey, uh, what are your thoughts on harshness and take that in the game? I have no problem with it <laughs> for the simple fact that Unless you're a latent player order to where somebody attacks you before you got the chance to defend, you got the chance to defend if you want to. Yeah. Don't overlook the value in that. And dissuading people from defend or from attacking you is just as good in some cases as yeah. them attacking you without having you know what I mean? Like yeah. it's not wasted, it keeps them at arm's length potentially. And if you have enough assi unassigned workers, you can always like you'll lose bees, but that could still be a way for you to get two points for defending and like preventing mitigating the damage of the raid and stuff. Like they have to commit a lot when they're doing that because otherwise they're just giving you points. And not just that, but whenever the neutrals are out there, the wild hives, that becomes such a nuisance to other play or to yeah. you and other players that I'll be honest, it almost seemed like we were far more focused on and I think this is the case, we were fo focused more on the wild hives than we were messing with each other um which that makes sense though because they're yeah. gonna come at you right and so yeah. you want those to go away first so i don't think that was just a kindness thing that was just right, do right. but i do think if we had scouted more at the beginning yeah maybe we would have been more spread out to where we didn't have to worry about them coming after us yeah. as much and try and put them over towards the other players more. That also may have been now, like when the way the maps, like when we combine them together, it could be a totally different like format, yep. so they could be more spread out, like more yeah, angular or something. Be. Which mm -hmm. which tells you there's different ways to go about playing this yeah. as well, right? And you can protect yourself more by being able to scout earlier in the game. Yeah. So there's two questions that kind of, I think, go together. Omar was asking about the lack of a player aid, or do the rules need some streamlining? And then Brian asked, does the game suffer because of his stream authenticity and theme adding unnecessary moving parts? And I was actually going to answer Omar's question almost with Brian's question. <laughs> um, it could be that the battles are a little convoluted, but then I was kind of going to say, well, they're bumblebees. <laughs> You're kind of bumbling around, you're taking losses, you're <laughs> defending. I don't think they're the most, I mean, you rarely step, that's why wasps have a reputation, right? Bumblebees aren't super aggressive. They just accidentally sting you when things happen and, and you know, they're not really attacking. So, but does that make the gameplay a little harder than it needs to be because it was trying to be so authentic and like how hives would interact? I think that's fair. I think the way the rating goes, or uh, in this game, the fact that whether it's player versus player, player versus uh, a wild, wild versus player, or wild versus wild, the fact that there are four different ways yeah, to do that, that's I feel thing. like that, that is right thing. there that is... is an issue. Which is what Omar chimed in with. He said, "Is it? do you even really need the neutral hive mechanism? <sighs> And we haven't played it enough to yeah. say one way or the other, and I'm not going to say. Good I, question. I wouldn't right. say definitively, but I do kind of, I like the fact that you, like, you want to swarm. Like, I actually think the swarm mechanic in this is my favorite thing, because it's like, you want to swarm, yes, especially like. early on. Yes. But by doing that, you're weakening yourself in terms of your workers, and you're creating this new threat on the board that is going to not just fight you, but also, like, take the spots you want to forage from. So, like, I like the neutral bees being a force in this game, mm -hmm. but it does come with that kind of cost of the added. The overhead. Like, the overhead. Basically. But yeah. then I don't know that I'd like it gone. Like, so that's, that's yeah, I agree. I, yeah. For me, just again, 
this is over very few number of plays mm -hmm. that I think I love the neutral or the wild hives. I love that no, mechanism in I this. I too, really do. Actually, mm -hmm. So I yeah. do not want that gone. So no. I think it adds to the game. Yeah. However, I think the way things attack feel like they could have been combined into less variables in that, like different yeah. there. However, if there was a way to succinctly be able to lay that out, that takes care of the problem across the board. If it could be done in a streamlined way on a... And I don't know that that's possible. I'm not sure that's possible, yeah. Because I'm sure that Matt, the designer, wrestled with that. Yeah. However, and to him, I'm sure it's very intuitive. A, he's a beekeeper, and B, it's his design. But it's not for us. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what the answer is there. But I do, I absolutely want the wild hives in this game. Because I think that adds a huge component to this game that adds to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And James mentions like the, he didn't see much building the hive up. I feel like it's not really possible unless you're playing the longer game. Like, if you're doing two or three years, That's then maybe thing. you might see something up here. We but did like, the one year, there is the, the longer yeah. game. Yeah, right. like I, don't, it, I was building up as much as I could, and it was still like so hard to get it because it's so plus, much honey there and were so many so bees. Many, there were so many rounds in which we couldn't yeah, procreate. We, right. we couldn't brood. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that, and that was the, because there were a number of, uh, season cards that didn't come out. Right. And the fact that we saw two thirds of the overheating in this game, that cost us actions. Yep. Yeah. Right? That cost us essentially matters, two yeah. actions. Yeah. Three or four bees there because the cooling of the hive right. and then going and getting the water. Right. Or even the cards that reduce the amount of honey you get from stuff. Right. right? Yeah. That yeah. just makes it all a bit harder, which yeah, I think so it makes sense. Like, you don't, don't want it to be an easy thing to just like make a huge So hive. honestly, streamlining the rating, we cut half the game's length in. And I think it flows better. Yes. Yeah. I think that that's it in a rub. Um, I like everything, most everything about this, except for the lack of the play rate. That's that's what this comes down or the, to. I, or, you know, and I think it really comes down to just the feel of that rating being something that you can really easily understand, whether yeah. that's through a player aid or, or simplification. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Like I think or I would you play say. play it more, and then you're like. Oh, okay, I got it. I'm down. Yeah, boom, I would boom, say boom. if if you look at this game and you're interested in it, you have to. I think you really have to go to your group and say we got to play this a few times because mm -hmm. it's yep. going to be really, really slow at first, and then it'll make a much more sense as we go and be yeah. more fun. And one other thing that I want to point out to everybody: we played like crap. <laughs> <laughs> we did. Okay, and the reason I say that is the winner scored 26 points. Right? That's terrible. There's a 40. So when you pass 40. And there's an 80, and I don't think Matt's the sadist type to just throw these in there and tease you. I but think again, this is there's the three. There's the three-year one, right? Which if you triple our scores, so these could be for the three. Years. Yeah, I think. Oh, well, you got me there. Yeah. So I'm right. not, I don't think... We could do we, better, we but I'm not sure how much better we could do. Yes, and <laughs> to be point. honest, some of you to had that... <laughs> you had... I mean, B doesn't just become B. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't work that way. Now you're stretching the puns. All right. You were like, oh, I should have given this away. And then if you had... You wouldn't have scored at all. You would have. Not you would have had, had zero bees. So some of the mistakes well, we no, made. no, but I, if I'd gotten rid of them, I would have had to spend less honey to feed the bees in the earlier upkeep. I don't upkeeps. think it was gonna. I think it would have mattered. I think it would have maybe had like, but it wouldn't have mattered. In no, because it's a third round of down. I mean, the, maybe or maybe not. I yeah. think realistically, I would mostly did okay. it because I thought it was fun to go for I Edward. Definitely <laughs> made, <laughs> I definitely yeah. made. I think that was probably the wrong move. Well, it gave me the win. The it, two points gave me the win. I, I went down from, you know, I think I could have probably fed it like six or seven of those. Like more of those bees would have survived right. if I just I like, definitely made lunch. some mistakes. Yeah. Where then I was like, oh, that was good. I did that. I, <laughs> thought, I thought I had a better plan, yeah. but that would have been bad. So there were definitely things that we bumbled our way through. Yeah. yeah. And I, again, I think the game punches above its weight. Yes. But I also think the, yeah, I, I, I think we, this is some on us as far as the fact that. No, but it gives a good indication of what it would be like yes. to play early on. Yes, yeah. without yeah, saying yeah. Matt in your game group to run the game. Right. I agree. Yes, that's and a this fair is, point. And this is the impression you're 
going to get if you're demoing this game at Gen Con. Right. We are <laughs> exactly. sitting down, Andrew and I, playing a game that you've become familiar with to teach it and run us through. And that's, you know, so I think that gives the experience. You see where the rough edges are. You see what would have to be worked on to play the game, where the knowledge would have to be uh, given to those players, you know, to bring yeah. them up to experience level. No, yeah. that's, uh, that's... I think that fair. I could have done a better job on exactly that to kind of be like, hey, be aware of these things. Yeah, so you ran a stream. Yeah. You, you ran it. You ran us through it as best you yeah, could. Yeah, it's tough, right? Because yeah, I mean, that, we also and you could see we had those aha moments during yeah. it. We're just like, oh, okay. Well, Andrew and I are looking at each other. Especially you left at one point, and we're both like, <laughs> we don't know what to do. Flop, Edward's sweat. gone. Like, There's a lot of tea. I'm sorry. Yes, all right. but that's why when you came back and they heard me whispering, I was like, oh. oh my bad. I had to go. I'm sorry. I know. Uh, I know. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so there you go. That's Be Lives, Be Lives, Be Lives. Uh, we will only know summer. So there you go. Um, so I and I'm excited to hear from Matt on this as well yeah. and get his yeah. feedback on this as well. So and we will convey that as we go along. So yeah. thanks everybody for joining us. That was. I had fun. I enjoyed oh, this. Yeah, no, I I don't want anyone to think like I'm super negative on this. No, like, I actually yeah. really thought it was cool. I just didn't know what I was doing at all. I right. know. So there you go. All right. Honestly, so. what I, at this point, I just want to battle like five times and then like, all right, let's and play. It, yeah. <laughs> For sure. So if you guys liked it, don't, don't forget to like and subscribe down below. Helps us. Help y'all. Uh, earlier when we played Watergate, uh, Matthias uh, Naj uh, Frost the Game said that he actually uh, went to our patrons and asked for people to give uh, all the history of Watergate and to write it because mm. I think he is contribute. Yeah, he's German, I believe, and yeah. so he's like, I don't have the knowledge, oh. and so he reached out to patrons of ours to be able to say, Hey, will you do the? Do you have the knowledge to be able to do this for all the flavor that's in Watergate? So that's one of the types of perks that you get for being a patron. You get if a you're into that, but you get to join the community, yeah. and there's so many discussions going on there. All the people talking about what they're seeing in Gen Con, things that they think are interesting, and there's so many different groups. It's not just some big. It's 18xx. It's yes. games. Mm. It's everything. So it's separated right? by what you're interested in the show, the different um, aspects, and yeah, if you haven't pledged before or become a patron it's hard to explain but you're joining a community when you pledge Absolutely. 18. Well, most so. of the people in chat actually they are know patrons. but so yeah tell your friends get them in there because the bigger the community is the better that is so go to pledgehc.com support the show there and it helps motivate us to keep doing these in future years so 11 streams in four and a half days it's pretty strong, I think. I think it's pretty. You guys are crazy. Oh boy, is it? You ain't lying. So here we are. Tired. All right, I am too. So we will be back tomorrow morning, 11 a.m. Yes. Eastern. Oof. Black Angel. It's a big one. Um, yes. Yeah, that's going to be a lot of fun. You so want to see this? Come back at 11. You're. It's. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed this, and then after that, we're going to be City of the Big Shoulders. Following that Oops. in the afternoon, so it's going to be a big day tomorrow. Awesome Hopefully, y'all hang out with us. Thanks, everybody. Time for bed. I'm Edward. I'm Jess. Andrew. All right, you guys have a wonderful evening. We'll catch you all tomorrow bright and early. Take care, everybody.